the fight for glory on the famous MCG when the My grandpa took me to see you. His great love was the mighty Aussie game. And his heroes became my idols as they strolled the MCG. And to be there for the big one was my aim. The seven wonders of the world, I stood and looked in all. But there's something back in my hometown that gives me more Cause when the outer grows It's the greatest place of all When the outer grows It makes your nice good talk To see the fight for glory On the famous MCG When the outer Wherever you may be, to the city of Melbourne, here in Australia, where for almost six months, 12 teams have been fighting it out to see who would be the two that would battle it out for the Premiership Cup in the 1986 Grand Final. Those two teams are Hawthorne, in fact the Hawks making it their fourth successive Grand Final, and the very powerful Carlton team who walked straight into the Grand Final after successfully accounting for Hawthorne in the second semi-final. But as everyone in this 100,000 plus crowd will tell you, a grand final is a very special day. It's a different day, it's a different ball game. The atmosphere here is absolutely electric. The weather has been kind to us. Heavy showers yesterday here in Melbourne, but today at the moment we're experiencing a temperature of around 14 degrees, cool conditions, but absolutely ideal for football. Carlton have had to show their hand early because they played and won the Army Reserve Cup, the reserve competition. Playing in the reserves were three players, Burke, Silvani and also Shine. And that left two players, namely Shane Robertson and Warren McKenzie, to run out for the seniors' grand final. I mentioned the atmosphere was electric here on the ground. I wonder what it looks like from above. Graham McNaney. Well, Sandy, it's just the same up here. The uh, estimated top temperature for today's grand final, 17 degrees Celsius, that's 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Currently 14 degrees Celsius, 58 degrees Fahrenheit. A 15 knot southeasterly breeze, light cloud cover, 2,500 feet, all in all great weather conditions. And the scene below us, of course, 100,000 people today packed into the Melbourne Cricket Ground for this year's grand final. This magnificent stadium, of course, scene of the 1956 Olympics, alive with colour and atmosphere, tension and, above all, excitement. This is truly one of the world's great sporting events. And in a year in Australia, which will see the America's Cup and the Australian Grand Prix, two international contests, the MCG today plays host to yet another great international event, the 1986 VFL Grand Final. Everything in readiness, back down to Sandy Roberts. Thank you, Graham. Yes, all is just about in readiness. I've talked of the atmosphere, so have you. And it's been happening here at the ground since early this morning. Let's take this report from Peter Donegan. Thank you, Sandy, and good afternoon, everyone. Well, it doesn't matter whether it's inside or on the outskirts of this great stadium, the Melbourne Cricket Ground, on this very special day in Australian sport, there's a feeling in the air that really is hard to describe. It's a feeling of tension, of expectant hope for the supporters of these two champion teams, Carlton and Hawthorne, as they flock to the famous ground before the match of the year. But mixed amongst that apprehension is the atmosphere of a carnival. It seems almost everywhere you look, the blue and white and brown and gold combinations adorn most of the 100,000 people arriving for today's game. And if you happen to operate one of the countless souvenir stalls, that's very good news. But the souvenirs aren't the only best sellers. Obviously, the prospect of watching the grand final makes one rather hungry. And of course, the big game just wouldn't be the same if there wasn't a drop of the bubbly on hand. They're all here today, the young, the not so young, and those in between. And all of them, for a day at least, will become either a fanatical blues fan or display unshakable faith in the Hawks. 
Even the prospect of afternoon showers in Melbourne can't dampen the enthusiasm towards Australian football's greatest day. But no matter what, the only thing that really matters is the game, the grand final, the one that really counts. Thank you, Peter. Well, in just a moment, this huge crowd at the MDG will come to life as one of Australia's greats joins us here at the ground, Olivia Newton-John, in just a moment. Holden are turning back the clock, back, back, back to 1985. Bigger than ever, Holden factory bonuses mean brand new Holden Camaro sedans and roomy Camaro wagons are yours, yes, yours, at 1985 prices. Don't fight about it, just rush, rush, rush to your Holden dealer and steal a Camaro sedan, the most economical car in its class, or a 1986 Camaro wagon at 1985 prices. Do it before it's too late. Be there, or be square. Sometimes life gets so Hello, crowded Tom. with never-ending bills and expenses, Ooh. you don't have room to move. Hello, That's why there's Westpac's All Together Package. It's the financial package that brings together the services you need to better manage your family finances. If your family needs room to move, get it all together with Westpac, the bank. We've seen a whole lot of champions in Australia on NEC. Australia's champion colour TV. Seen them run, swim and fall. Seen them hit and do it all. NEC, our champion colour TV. From the champs in colour TV comes a knockout selection of portables. Like this handy little all-rounder. See the whole range of NEC's affordable portables at your retailer now. And you'll see why NEC is leading the field. NEC, our champion colour TV. Kyneton, Victoria, June 22nd, 1945. Two baby girls born just feet apart at almost the same time. This isn't the child they showed me in the hospital. They've given you the wrong baby. Now, the true story of the world's most intriguing custody battle. The haunting account of a bizarre mystery that has never been resolved. Premiering Sunday and Monday at 8.30. The year's most involving miniseries. Whose Baby? On 7. A love obsessive in a time of change. A time that would see Australia divided and families and friendships destroyed over a war in a place called Vietnam. Coming soon, an epic love story passionately told against the march of great events. Sword of Honour on Seven. As we welcome you back to the MCG, in the background, the Hawthorne theme song. Two groups of people have worked so hard in preparation for this final, not only the players, but also the cheer squads. And this is their moment of glory. Having seen the Carlton banner, we're now looking at the Hawthorne banner and this big crowd giving them both a very warm reception, one that they richly deserve. Our master of ceremonies for this 1986 grand final is Ron Casey. Your Excellency, Mr. Prime Minister, Mr. Premier, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, on behalf of the Victorian Football League, welcome to the 1986 Grand Final between Carlton and Hawthorne. As in previous years, this match is being watched live throughout Australia on the Seven Network and associated regional stations. We also welcome viewers throughout the world of this telecast of our Australian Football Grand Final here in the city of Melbourne, capital of the state of Victoria. Through the expertise of OTC, worldwide technology via Intelsat, it will be seen in the United States of America, New Zealand, the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, West Germany, Italy, Canada, Japan, France, Ireland, Austria, Denmark, Sweden, Switzerland and Thailand. Over 70 million people will be watching this great grand final today. We also recognise and appreciate the support of the Australian Tourist Commission and Qantas Airways for their contribution in making these international telecasts possible. And special appreciation to Carlton and United Breweries, 
makers of Fosters, the official sponsors of this year's VFL Premiership season. In the tradition of the VFL Grand Final, there is a special Grand Final guest. Today, the VFL is honoured to have as its special guest, Miss Olivia Newton-John, Matilda and what a fantastic rendition it was too by Olivia Newton-John. She certainly is an extremely welcome guest back here in Australia. But perhaps to more important things, at least as far as the fans and the players are concerned at the moment, and that is the final preparations from the Carlton rooms to the Hawthorne rooms and the boys obviously, naturally, a little toey. But when they run out onto this ground, when a crowd in excess of 100,000 through the banners, those first couple of minutes are going to be absolutely electric. What about the two coaches? They've been through absolutely everything through six months to try and get where they are today. Robert Walls and Alan Jeans. 
Hawthorne coach Alan Jeans began his senior playing career with St Kilda in 1955. And perhaps his 77 games as a player are not legendary, but his skills as a coach most certainly are. Alan Jeans will always be remembered for 1966, the year his Saints won their first and only premiership. The Saints snuck home by just one point from Collingwood in a thriller. In 1976, Jeans decided it was time to take a break, and it was not until 1981 that Hawthorne lured him to Glen Ferry. The Jeans style was perfect for Hawthorne and brought startling results. The Hawks picked up the 1983 flag and are battling it out in their fourth consecutive grand final. Grand finals are not new to Carlton coach Robert Wald either. He enjoyed an illustrious career as a player and was a key member of three Carlton Premiership sides. Wald's learnt much from his 260 games and in 1981, Fitzroy persuaded him to try his hand as a coach. In 1986, he answered the call from Princess Park and returned to coach his beloved Blues. Wall's the coach is blessed with a great knowledge of football and many of his tactics in season 86 have brought him praise from his peers. The Blues have beaten Hawthorne once already in this year's final series, but Walls knows only too well that today is another matter. Hawthorne are a hardened finals combination and Alan Jeans a cagey opponent. To the coaches and the players of these two sides, today is their day. But of course, there can only be one winner. To both sides, we say all the very best of luck. They've worked so hard to get here, and to the victor go the spoils. Well, the atmosphere down here on the ground is absolutely electric, and I'm sure up in our commentary team, the boys can feel it just as much as we can. And heading our commentary team once again, as we welcome him to the coverage, Peter Landy. Thank you, Sandy. Good afternoon to you, and a very good afternoon, everyone. We're all of you watching throughout Australia and throughout the world. The VFL Grand Final is a great day in Melbourne. It's a great day for sport in Australia. Sandy mentioned the coaches. The coaches, indeed, have done all they can do. Indeed, now, it's up to the players of the respective sides. A very good afternoon to Lou Richards. Good afternoon, Peter. And good afternoon to Bob Scott. Good afternoon, Peter. Well, there's no doubt about it, uh, Peter and Bob. The uh, atmosphere here is electric. We say this every year, but it seems to get bigger and bigger every year. And, uh, it does, doesn't it? Well, I can imagine how the players feel down there, but by golly, the commentators feel pretty uh, hepped up too, don't they? Well, you only look at those players now and uh, the tension that would be inside the stomach of those players at this very moment. Uh, well, you know, I've never been there. You have, Lou, and uh, but I can imagine just how those players do feel at this very moment. You certainly do, and I can imagine what both sides are going through. The coach is walking amongst the players, revving them up. So would they need any revving up now? Well, no, they don't, but the coach still thinks he's doing the right thing by them, Peter, and uh, he'll be at it until they hit the ground, and of course, I think it's been mentioned many times, Bob. Once they get down the ground, you've been a coach. They're on their own, baby, aren't they? Yes, if uh, the minute they run down that race, they are completely in their own hands. And there are many occasions that uh, a player, not intentionally, because intentionally the player wants to do everything the coach wants, but he's in another world, he's in another planet, uh, and when he gets down there, as we see Carlton coming down the race, ready to come onto the ground for the 1986 Grand Final. Carlton led out by their captain, Mark McClure. Mark has played in three grand finals previously. Interestingly, they've won them all. Well, that's right, and it's a good uh, feeling, a psychological feeling in his favour that every grand final he's played in, the last well, the three he's played in, he won them, Bob, and that must make him feel terribly confident. One player we should be keeping our eye on, he'll certainly be in the play, number 11 for Carlton, Bruce Toole. You can't miss him. He is the oldest player on the ground by the Hawthorne captain, Michael Tuck. He's playing his last game, win or lose. And it was actually, I think, Bruce Dool that broke the banner, Bob. Well, I think that's uh, fair enough because the man has been an ornament for the game. And, uh, well, there's always a touch of sadness when somebody right. like Bruce Dool does decide to give the game away. There isn't any doubt, I don't think, in anybody's mind that Bruce Dool could play another year. But I can understand the, the thinking of a Bruce Dool you know, let's go out with a grand final, let's go out on top. And the man certainly has been on top, not just for one year, but for the whole period of time that he's been in VFL football. Peter, how do you replace a player of the calibre of Bruce Dool? It's just about impossible, I should imagine, that famous number 11 we put away in mothballs until the right youngster comes along. OK, well, many great players have had it at Carlton. I remember Johnny Gould playing a number 11, right. and now Bruce Dool, of course. So 
uh, whoever takes it has got a tough job ahead. Hawthorne, they've played in the last three grand finals. They won in 1983 convincingly from Essendon. The Bombers came from behind to beat them in 84, and they thrashed them last year. The Hawks certainly have something to prove this year, and they're about to make their entrance onto the Melbourne Cricket Ground for the fourth year in succession. Well, there they are now, and uh, being revved up at the last moment by their coach, Alan Jeans. Let's say this, he'd be classed as the doyen of coaches because he's possibly the oldest coach in the business. But there's one great thing about Alan Jeans, Bob. He loves football, and that's why he's so successful, I would say. I don't think there's any um, problem with age because I think Norm Smith was a better coach at the end of his, his uh, tether than, uh, you know, well into the piece. Uh, I think the maturity, even as coaches, uh, it sounds it sounds ridiculous that, uh, to say that a man gets maturity at about 48, 49, right. and, and thereabouts. But uh, I think it has happened uh, in the case of coaches. I do believe so, and, and uh, I say quite openly that I believe the Alan Jeans that's coaching Hawthorne now is a far better coach than the man who coached and killed all premiership. And here comes Hawthorne, led onto the ground by their captain, Michael Tuck. And what a great player this fella's been with the beard. Number 17, you'll see him performing today. One of the great players in Victorian football over the last 12 or 13 years, and uh, he'll be trying like every other player, but it must be a great feeling, Bob. I played in the three grand finals, and I know, you know, you think, OK, that's great, but you can never go to a grand final at this particular stage unless you get the lump in the throat. I bet we've all got it here at this present moment. Well, you can imagine how the players feel, Lou, because right. I get it every year and I'm not even out there. <laughs> That's right. It is a great atmosphere. Hawthorne, as I said, have something to prove because they were annihilated in a one-sided contest last year. But I think most of us here would agree, uh, Bob and Lou, that Hawthorne and Carlton have been the two best sides in 1986. Well, there's no doubt about that. Uh, possibly the uh, Carlton side, the best team that money could buy. Hawthorne still going on their happy way. And they are a real professional side. I think Bob will agree with that. Well, Hawthorne finished on top of the ladder right. at the end of 22 games. And they were beaten by Carlton in the second semi and in the finish beaten quite convincingly. And I do agree with you, Pete, that these two sides, to me, have proven themselves to be the best two sides in the competition this year. While the players are coming around doing their laps prior to the match, let's take a look at some of the players that we should be keeping our eye on. And first of all, from Hawthorne, Robert Dippier Domenico, uh, co-winner of the Brownlow medal on Monday night for the best and fairest in the competition. Yes, and what a great, uh, well, a great thing for football that Dippier Domenico and the deep Pieter Manigo type. He and Greg Williams are ball players, but they're really tough ball players. If you get in their way, as Michael Reeves found out the other week, it does make a difference. Your Tom Elvin man today, up on it. I would imagine it's Tom Elvin. Now, Elvin's played most of his football on the back line as a defender, and he will be as a defender. And I think Alan Jeans might uh, well, have uh, Elvin's opponent, deep Pieter Manigo, chasing Rhys Jones around. All right, players to watch, we continue with Jason Dunster. Uh, I guess we'll be seeing him on duel, Bob. Well, he would be one of the keys to the game. Uh, he struggled against Bruce Gould uh, two weeks ago, but he did an excellent job last week against Gary Pert. And Pert, youthful, juvenile, plenty of pace, and uh, Dunster really worried him last week. And the duel between he and Bruce Gould could have a big effect on the result of the game. I guess uh, Dunster will have to move around as much as he did last week on duel, Bob. Well, this is the man is a monument to football and uh, I for one say well done Bruce Duell regardless of what today's outcome is regardless of how the man's played I don't think I've ever seen a more consistent footballer in the years that I've been watching football I certainly must agree with that Duell playing his 359th game today he came originally from the Melbourne suburb of Jakarta one of the players that Hawthorne will be certainly looking for. He kicked four goals last week, originally from South Australia. Probably got his best game for the year last week. Another man that I've been looking for to improve on two weeks ago because he did struggle against Carlton two weeks ago. But we do know the capabilities of John Platten. He's an exciting player. He is up in, in on the bottom of the packs. And, of course, another South Australian, Greg Bradley. He has uh, come across and probably been the surprise packet of the South Australians. Motley, Turnerhan, Bradley. And early in the season, we saw Bradley in such magnificent form. Now, not when I say early in the season, he hasn't really dropped away. He did uh, not quite vote quite as well in the Brownlow as we might have thought, but we'll have a big say in who wins this game today. So will this player, Bob. Dermot Brewer from half forward for Hawthorne. Yes, he and his opponent. Uh, last uh, two weeks.
Derek to go. He started off and had by far the better of Dorotich in the first quarter. But after the report, uh, Dermot Brereton looked as though he went uh, amongst the fairies. And uh, I don't think uh, Dermot Brereton will have any effect uh, whether he's reported or not. His opponent, John Dorotich. Un well, ineligible to win the Brownlow medal, but then picked up... Uh, a great number of votes, I uh, think 14 votes, and did really well. And uh, John Doritich and Dermot Brewerton, another two players to have the, the gap between the sides. All right, let's go down now once again to our Master of Ceremonies, Ron Casey. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, would you please stand for the Australian flag as Olivia Newton-John leads us in Advance Australia Fair. Australia Fair, another fantastic rendition of that song, and boy, uh, as one of Australia's homegrown products, uh, I know at least 100,000 fans that are delighted to see her back. Right, we're just about set for the toss, the all-important toss. The weather conditions here at the ground are fantastic. A temperature of around 14 degrees. The ground is in marvellous condition. Here's the toss with Peter Donigan. Pete? Right, Mark McClure calling. Well, Carlton. Carlton has won the toss. And Mark McClure will kick to the Richmond end, the left-hand side of the screen. Right, thank you, Pete. So, uh, Mark McClure, first blood to Carlton. Well, there's no doubt about the atmosphere of a grand final. But we have to go back to 1970 for the greatest crowd ever seen here at the MCG. And one man who was lucky enough to play in that was Peter McKenna. Pete, 121,000 fans. What is the atmosphere of a crowd like that like? Well, there is no feeling like it. In fact, I just uh, felt the same thing when I stood out in the middle then. But it was an amazing crowd that year. And, of course, that was the days of standing room in the crowd here at the MCG. And it was a great atmosphere. And those players today, would, even the players that have played for Hawthorne in the last four grand finals, would be feeling those uh, nerves. Yes, it's fantastic for them now. With the toss decided, they go through their preliminaries. How long does it take them? How long did it take you to settle down? Well, I don't think you feel your legs. When you run out in the ground, you don't feel your legs. It's a mad scramble for five minutes. It's at least five minutes for the players to settle down and play their normal style of game. You'll find the first five minutes are absolutely ferocious as players tear in, and you'll see a lot of tough work in that first five minutes of the game. Just then, we were looking at a man playing his last game, Bruce Dool. Well, Bruce Dool has been an amazing player, and what a fitting uh, farewell it would be for him if they could go out with a premiership. But I'm sure Jason Dunstall will be thinking uh, otherwise, and he'll have his work cut out, Bruce, on Jason, a youngster, against a great old man of football. Well, uh, the players are getting rid of the track suits. The atmosphere within the crowd is building, and the tension, too, is mounting. So in just a few minutes' time, we're going to be set for a grand clash. Well, they've had some great encounters in the past, and today, I'm sure, will be absolutely no exception. 
But before the players get down to business for this 86 grand final, let's just relive some of those past encounters. The first BFL grand final was played in 1897, and in the decade to follow, Carlton emerged a premiership force to be reckoned with. Today, and 14 premierships later, Carlton do battle with Hawthorne for the 1986 flag. And despite the modern-day successes of both clubs, this year marks the first time these great sides have confronted each other on grand final day. They have, however, met three times in season 86. In fact, the season commenced as it will finish, with Hawthorne taking on Carlton. That day belonged to the Hawks, as they crushed the Blues by 36 points. The return bout came in round 12, right here at the MCG. And again, the Hawks emerged victorious, this time by 23 points. Hawthorne finished the season on top of the BFL ladder and hot favourites for the flag. Hawthorne, they said, had Carlton's measure. It was said Carlton would buckle under the intense pressure of the finals. Come second semi-final day, 1986, most people expected Hawthorne to cruise into the grand final. But Carlton displayed enormous spirit in snatching victory by 28 points. The Hawks had their chances to win, but Carlton withstood the challenge. The Hawks were forced to overcome sentimental favourites Fitzroy in the preliminary final. And their 56-point win was more like the Hawthorne combination we've come to expect. Today, Hawthorne and Carlton meet face-to-face -face in the ultimate confrontation. The 1986 BFL Grand Final. And so the ground has been all but cleared. Those that remain are the players and the umpires. To all of them, we wish them well. And now to our commentary team once again, is Peter. Thank you, Sandy. The umpires, incidentally, are Peter Cameron, who's no stranger to BFL Grand Finals, and John Russo, umpiring his first big one in September. Bob Skilton, uh, out of the Hawthorne side, it would appear Rickman, Jenke, and uh, Judge. Yes, and onto the bench, Morris and Kennedy. Uh, Robertson and Mackenzie onto the bench for Carlton. Bob, I'm a bit... Good. There's uh, D. Pierre Domenico, and of course, uh, the winner of the 19, or he tied with the... Uh, with Williams uh, for the Brownlow medal, the best and fairest player in the league, and uh, he'll have to probably uh, minding uh, Reese Jones. I don't know whether uh, Hawthorne will take that charge, Bob. Gary Ayres. Well, we'll wait and see just how they line up. Um, but Gary Ayres looks as though yeah. he might be uh, picking up Reese Jones at the present moment. And uh, Dermot Brown, of course, being tagged by number six, Dorothy. Langford to centre half back on Kernahan. Mew to full back on Hunter. So there's a wild scramble out there to, to pick up players in positions, and that's uh, the usual way of the grand final. But Dorothy still chasing Hunter, who's been tagged here now by uh, Chris New. Tuck's gone into Melbourne. Well, there's a bit of confusion in the centre. No one seems to know who's picking up here. I notice Bradley's been picked up now by uh, Eid. Eid. First quarter of the 1986 BFL grand final. It's between Carlton and Hawthorne. Hawthorne kicking to the right. A bad bounce. Dia gets first touch, but it's going Carlton's way. Blue ball to half forward, but the Brownlow medalist gets the first kick of the game. Back to centre wing. Dorotich and Brereton tangle. English. Curran. Platten. Platten at centre field. Lovely ball to get around Madden. The two number 44s. Dunstall leads out. Just a little bit too far from Duel. And the flying doormat sees the ball and his opponent safely over the boundary line. It'll be a throw at the left half forward flank for Hawthorne, about 50 metres from their goal. Hawthorne kicking to the western stand in. Number 44 is Madden. With Deer, number 14 for Hawthorne. Well put it out by Bradley. Almost a mark to Wallace. Langford went through very solidly. Picked up by Wallace for Hawthorne. Bacanara. He'll be very keen to do well today because we remember. Why wasn't that a mark, Bob? Well, it was just about a mark. I noticed that. Uh, Blackwell's down behind the uh, play, but he's OK. You watch on replay and we'll see just how Blackwell went down. It's, it's Dorothy. No, it wasn't the Blackwell that incident. Brereton into the goal square. Dunstall! And Dunstall has a chance to bring up the first score of the game. It should be a goal. And he would be still suffering from butterflies in the tummy, I'm sure. No, he's only about 10 metres out, if that. Bruce still just having a look at the goalpost, and it's a swirly win, so perhaps the kick not as easy as it might look from here. Crowd behind the goal like it. They're all Hawthorne supporters. Hawthorne get off to a very good start. One goal at the 1 minute 50 mark at the first quarter. An excellent mark by Jason Dunstall, and after 
playing so poorly against Bruce Dool two weeks ago, um, well, you couldn't ask for any more than to take the first mark and bring up first goal. So, well done, Jason Dunstall. And when you say, well done, look at the difference. 38 games, Jason Dunstall, 359, Bruce Dool. Was on scoring first blood in the 86 grand final. The Hawks leading by six points. Good start for Hawthorne. Madden got the tap down and fumbled at centre field again. Picked up that time and driven down by Swab over Hawthorne's half forward line. Coming out to meet it as Glasgow played a great game, but he fumbled. There's a touch of nerves of all the players. Motley as he gets that hand pass out there on the half back line. A long kick. There's a chance for DPN and Manico bounced the wrong way. Going well. Oh, Evans was grabbed, didn't have the ball, but the umpire call play on. Tapped on by Langford. Goes across to Evans, driven back by Wallace. Punched out again by uh, Dean. The ball comes back towards Little Loveridge. And Loveridge boots the ball over the half forward line. Coming out now. Oh, Harv has got it. What right on the 50 metre defence line? Umpire calling play on. He's a bit confused. Over to Inglis. Inglis gets the ball out wide. There's a go from Aldrum. He's got it. And Tuck was late on the scene. Could be a 15-metre penalty. No, the umpire didn't play that. The kick by Meldrum didn't cover a great distance. Kerner handled it. He marked that, but uh, umpire's not giving any charity. There's Johnson streaming away from the pack. Going for the goals. This looks good. It might be through. No, was touched right on the line. And it's one point. So Carlton rebounding very quickly. Gee, that win carried the ball in. Carlton one point to uh, Hawthorne. One goal, six points into the quarter by three and a half minutes. That's uh, at a hectic pace at the moment, Bob. It certainly is, Lou. And uh, it'll be interesting just to see how they settle down. A uh, lovely mark there. Lovely mark to Langford. Play on. Play on, he called. Hand pass coming back down to Wallace. Wallace in everything over to Weed. Well, that should be a free kick uh, to uh, Curran. The umpire's going to play a bit of a box on between Ayers and uh, Reese Jones. Well, Reece, the, the umpire's already out. getting the book out. It looks as though Reese Jones could be uh, He's booked. Gone. And by a boundary umpire. What a sensation. Oh, Cameron, Cameron, Cameron. Though. I think the boundary umpire came over too to have something to say, Pete. Let's see what happened there. Ayers and Reese Jones in a tangle. Well, I don't know if that's a reportable offence, is it? Could you, uh... Not unless something happened before that. Well, that's rather strange. That, uh, let's hope it doesn't put Reese Jones off his game because he's a brilliant player. They need him here today. Or going back to Ayers, he gets the free kick. I thought it might have been a mark to Curran. And a free kick, he's, uh, of course... 15 metre penalty, too. 15 metre penalty. penalty. This brings him right up to the wing position. Into the quarter by just on five minutes. And Hawthorne lead by five points. Gary Ayres from left centre wing. Looks for Brereton. Platten. And scramble down there. And we will see a bounce. Still at Hawthorne's left half forward flank. I guess judging by the wind or the flags here. Carlton kicking with the assistance of it. But of course in this stadium it does swirl around a lot. Almost over the boundary line. Still in play. Now it's over. It will be a free kick to Carlton in the right back pocket, and the recipient will be John Doritich. But they're certainly not giving Reese James the latitude he had in the second semi final. Ayers is not leaving his side. No, they're not going to let a player run around and do the damage that he did in that game. Yes, he was best on the ground. I think most of us would agree there. Four Carlton players. Tommy Alvin is the one to get there first. Alvin's kick over the heads of a lot of players down there. It bounces Carlton away from McClure. The opposite uh, captain is Michael Tuck. Dippy of the Medico, starting well for Hawthorne at left centre wing. Bacchanara, mile in the air, couldn't take it, Platten. Oh, grab, surely, great, great, great kick. Him like a rat. 15 metres it should be. Not being paid. Well, he, got, he grabbed him once. Oh, look at him go the air that time. Yes, I think if he'd have taken that, we might have changed our mark of the year. That's right. Buckenaro, I was going to say earlier, he'd be very keen to do well today because he was injured in the opening minutes of the 83 grand final, which Hawthorne won. Hit the post, so one point. Hawthorne lead by six points at the six and a half minute mark of the quarter. Long kick by the Little Rover from South Australia originally and just off time. It's left to number 37, Wayne Harms. To bring the ball back after that behind was scored. Harms straight up the ground. Good safe mark by English. English in half back looks for the hand pass. It's taken by Glascott. Kernahan. This way, that way, gets clear, shoots at goal. And is off target and puts it. No, it's out of bounds. 
So boundary throw in the play close. Carlton's left forward pocket. And we're just on the seven minute mark. Six points the difference in favour of Hawthorne. Dunstall kicking their first goal with a brilliant mark against Duell. And of course, Bruce Duell playing his last game. The backers Hunter got the tap down. Kicked off the ground that time by E. Coming in to meet it now is Reese Jones. A heavily tagged that time by Ayers, but he's clear now the tag. Over it goes to Harms. A long shot at goal. And look at this kick. It travels plenty of distance, but unfortunately for Carlton, it's on target. And it goes through for one point. Carlton still yet to score a goal. Two behinds on the board. The Hawthorne, one goal, one seven points. Seven and a half minutes gone of the first quarter of the 1986 Grand Final in front of a capacity crowd here today. Over the 100,000 mark. Oh, they all fly. No one takes them up. There's uh, a great getting it out for DP in a minute ago. A good tackle by Alvin. Up by a core player. Giving plenty of latitude today. Grand final. Ayers gets it over to Curran. A long kick up there towards Dutton and Duel. Dutton's still got his hands to it. In comes Doral. He kicks it off the ground. Not a good one. Backs up well. The hand pass is bad. Back it comes now to Brown. A stop and go. And he's off target. And it's through for one point. So Hawthorne doing most of the attacking, but uh, they've missed a couple of easy ones down there. One goal, two eight points for Carlton, two behind zone. So the difference, six points. As we wait now for the ball to come back into play as we approach the eight and a half minute mark of this first quarter. Good mark to Dean now, right on the 50 metre defence line. 15 metre penalty. Well, they've settled down pretty quickly, Bob. Uh, normally they take a bit longer than this. Yes, there hasn't been the mishandling that we usually come to find in the final grand finals. Johnson goes for a hand pass. He was trapped length, but was trapped too. We see uh, Abbott, Abbott, uh, Abbott, I should say, get it over deep. He had a minute going through. Taps it on very intelligent, but the umpires made him a free kick for interference. And uh, Dippy will take the free kick uh, short of centre-half back. Short pass, Engford bubbles, but recovered okay. Kernahan right on his toe. Oh! Kernahan copped the heavy one from Deer, yeah, and the umpire play. spotted it. Really? He's going to take the book out, I would say, and report him. Well, so he should, because he reported Reese Jones. Fair's fair. Fooley's play. Fooley's play. You, let's watch it again, Bob. Well, that's on replay. It's an elbow, isn't it? You can see for yourself, when, uh, when your side's got the ball. Come in and check it, but don't give it away. That's right, that's why it was foolish. A bad kick, that wasn't a particularly good pass. Meldrum gets to of Schwab and a long shot at goal. Goal, Carlton's first. So, that free kick proving pretty costly for Hawthorne. 1-2, scores level. It's a great goal by Paul Meldrum, and he really took advantage of that. Uh, a very clever play and a nice long goal. And so Greg Deer paying the penalty for a foolish piece of jeopardy. Especially as we said before, when Hawthorne had the ball and were going forward, and umpire Peter Cameron was right on the spot. Ten and a half minutes gone. First quarter, scores level with the 86 grand final. Deer wins that knockout. Ede, Green kick to half forward. Funny old bounce favours Gary Ayres, who pumps it some 25 metres downfield, but it's all Carton and picked up by Motley. Motley short pass, he'll find someone with that. Glasgow, well tackled. Not a good kick, he... Upfield, Peter. That's a grand final free kick. McClure. Kernahan stumbles. Opportunity now, he's opposite number four, Russo, but the boundary line is too close. Russo, it would appear, has the job of tagging Bernie Evans. We haven't seen much of Evans so far. Likewise, Russo, so Russo perhaps doing a good job to date. McClure goes up high with Langford. Ball booted out by Abbott. Green. Into ears at centre field. He is covering a lot of territory today. Not a good kick. Brereton in front of Dorotich will look for a hand pass to Platten. Originally intended, I think, but Curran's there. Backs up well. He's shot at goal. Announcing the Foster's 1986 Formula One Grand Prix sweepstakes. Your chance to win a sensational $250,000 Lamborghini Comptage. Or your choice from these prestige cars plus cash. Each to the total value of $250,000. Full details on how to enter wherever Foster's Lager is sold. 
the Foster's 1986 Formula One Grand Prix sweepstakes. Enter now. Entries close November 7th. Hawthorne lead by six points now at the 12 minute mark of the first quarter. And that was Curran's first goal. Knocked down by Madden. Gets it well down to Blackwell. Blackwell with Dippy Domenico in pursuit under Alvin. Alvin inside the 50 meter line. There's the quick fly. Hit That's the post. The post. Uh, close to reach. Well, that even that score, and the difference is five points. Well, they certainly bounced back quickly, Count. That was brilliant play on the part of Blackwell and uh, Alvin to score a point unlucky for the Blues. But uh, the game after a kind of a slow start as far as the tempers are concerned, Bob, it's starting to hot up a bit now. I think they've uh, really started to realise that it is a grand final. DP and Domenico scanning out brilliantly, drives the ball back to centre half forward. At the back is Buccanaro, he's taking that mark and rightly no, so the no mark. No mark, the umpire set play on, kicked off the ground by Harbs over the rears, doing a great job on Reese Jones, tapped on by Dunstall. Beautiful play, this will be a goal. Added about that. A goal to Brewer. That was a magnificent play on the part of Dunstall. Great play. So we see the scoreboard. Hawthorne up to a great start. Three goals, 220. The count, one goal, three, nine points. Sure, almost did that in slow motion. Well, he certainly did, and uh, there was no doubt the umpire did the right thing there. It was no mark to Bacanara. He is once again in the thick of things. And look at the piece of play by Dunstall. A tap on there for giving Dermot Brereton all the time in the world. Well, the difference 11 points. And we're 13 and a half minutes into this first quarter. The 1986 grand final. Knocked out by Matt over to Blackwell. Jucking the ball. He's grabbed. He got one a bit high. Down he goes. The umpire will ball it up. Well, Hawthorne uh, is doing a magnificent job there on the wing on Reese Jones. Not only got Reese Jones covered, Bob, but being a brilliant player himself. So far, he is, Luke. Well, he's had a couple of knocks today. That shook him up a bit, that one. Of course, uh, he was a doubtful starter. He is a bit, is a bit groggy. My word, he's a bit groggy. Really shook him up that last bump. I thought it might have been a free kick. The ball comes down there towards Russo, fumbles the ball. Picked up by Abbott. Abbott gets a hurried kick back towards Brown. Hits the deck. There's a go for Curran. A slick hand pass over the flat. Ball beautiful. Only got one from me, but he's clear. Short pass, and Curran's got it. Cullen backing up beautifully, goes for the pass, it'll be OK, and Buccanaro got one for Buckley. 15 metres, is it? No, I don't think so. I don't think Buckley could do anything else that time. And uh, Buccanaro, a strong gutsy mark that time, has a chance to put another goal on the board for Hawthorne. There's nothing else he could have done there, Bob. Uh, the did the right thing. It is a grand final, let's face it. And Gary Buccanaro has the chance to bring up his first goal in the VFL grand final. There he is from about, and that's what it is, a goal. So Hawthorne at the 15-minute mark of this first quarter of the grand final of 1986. Blackwell coming off, Luke. Four goals, 226 to Hawthorne. One goal, 3-9 points. As Bob Skilton said, Blackwell coming off the ground looking pretty groggy. Robertson on. And going out pretty quickly, too. Let's watch that goal again in replay. Platten, lovely walk here just as well. His head would have finished up in the southern stand. And he got it under Curran. Curran in turn to Buccanara, who goal for Hawthorne. Back into the centre. Hawthorne lead by 15 points. Need fumbles. Chance for Green. Off the ground. Left half forward flank. Dorotich and Brereton. Dorotich gets there first. Gets the ball out in turn to Dean. That was uh, a free kick going Carlton's way. He was grabbed. We're not in possession. Good play on the part of Dorotich too, Pete. Well, you're a big rap for him, Lou. Well, he knocked it out. And he has had a good year. And doing a good job on Kernahan so far as Langford. 31 is Alvin, 44 is Platten, who's over the boundary line with the ball. Throwing to follow on the centre wing. Coach's box for Carlton, Robbie Walls. Madden and Deer. Madden doing a little bit better in the ruck. Alvin fumbles. Need to Dippy Domenico, who started well. Ayers, who Bob mentioned, is also playing well on the wing. Bacanara may get there. No, English will beat him to it, and the ball is over the line, is it? It is now. Oh, Bacanara's down. From Motley. It's a boundary throw, I think. Well, it will be a free kick, Pete, if you're in Prince. You've got one right on the ear. Not paying it, Luke. Thank you, Let's take a look at it again. No, I think you're missing. I think it's a good decision by the umpire. Brereton over the top of Madden, but Madden will get the free kick for one in the ear. You have to be tall to touch him on the ear. Justin's about six foot nine or thereabouts. 
Madden from back pocket. Kernahan has it knocked away from him. Actually, that was almost a mark. Reese Jones spins out beautifully. Alvin, right centre wing. Short pass, Hunter marks in front of Mew. Johnson runs into Mew. Caught holding the ball. Clowns all well and good, but when you give it to a man who's running straight at an opponent. Got a free kick going Hawthorne's way, and it will be taken by Chris Mew, assisted by a 15-metre penalty, and that brings him up almost to centre wing. And we're approaching the 18-minute mark of this first quarter, and Hawthorne looking good at this early stage of the grand final. Knocked out by Brewer. There's a stack up here on the umpire. We'll ball it up about 65 metres out from the uh, Hawthorne goal. They're looking good. Four goals, 2.26 to Carlton. One goal, 3.9 points. And that forward line of Carlton is under a bit of strain because the defence of Hawthorne is staying very close. Madden doing a lot better today, particularly in the ruck, as the ball is driven back there towards Buckingham and Motley having a great battle. Tap on by Brewer. Uh, Over goes to Green. Green goes down. And the umpire said that it'll be a baller. Peter Donegan downstairs has some news on Wayne Blackwell, Pete. Yes, Pete, they're looking at Wayne Blackwell for signs of concussion when he sat on the bench. The doctor told him to read the scoreboard, which he did. He's nodding his head saying he's OK, but only the doctor will have the last word on that. Well, he was stunned. There's nothing about that. The ball knocked out by Deer. Comes across to Ayres. He goes down. A good hand pass back to Buckingham. And a hurry snap at goal. And it's over the line and uh, through for one point. So Hawthorne doing most of the attacking and looking the better side. And Jeans, a worried man, but I should imagine, Bob, he'd be pretty happy with their performance so far. You're never happy until the game's finished, Lou, but uh, at this stage, I'm sure he would be reasonably content. Alvin, out towards Buckley and Loveridge. Buckley uh, will be paid that much. No, he won't. No, he's not paying, and they've got to earn it today. If we see this fellow doing well, G. Pieta Manico. Well, let's play at the goals. It's a long shot. A chance for Dill. Got under that one. Luckily for Carlton, too, because it went through for one point. Standing at the back that time was Dunstall. B. Pieter Manigo giving plenty of orders. One goal, three nine points. To 28 points for Hawthorne. The ball back in the play again. It's English. Right on the 50-metre defence line. Drives the ball out to Melbourne. Coming out with Melbourne was Tuck. Tuck and Melbourne go over the line. The ball is out of bounds on the centre wing position. Into this first quarter by nine and a half minutes. And Hawthorne, four goals, four, 28 to Carlton, one goal, three, nine points. Carlton badly needing a goal to get themselves back in the picture. Knocked out by Matt, dominating the knockouts. Over it goes to, uh, to Wallace. Uh, uh, Dorridge couldn't hold that one. Back to Brown, he's collared. In goes Dom. A pass found a free kick. It'll go to uh, Browden against English. So Browden's got a chance now to set them deep into attack. He's gone for a hand pass. Over to E. There's the replay, he at 50 metres out, fires at the goals, Dunstan and Duell. Dunstan knocks the ball on, Duell's first to recover, but the young fella's after him. But Duell on the boundary line, and the old veteran, the flying doormat, gets it back out towards the wing position. Has a chance now for Bradley, he's been unsighted so far, back to Abbott, good play. Hope it goes to uh, Green, back to Wallace, out wide, looking for Clutton, the ball is out of bounds. About Free kick, I think, Luke, and it will come back to Wallace, and... Uh... Great play by Paul Abbott. Exactly right. Took the bit between the teeth and attacked the ball, took it away and showed tremendous courage and great skill. Just off the 20. Just off the 21 minute mark of this first quarter. Ball four to one three. Peter Monty, number two for Carlton. Monty in the back pocket. Straight up the centre of the ground. Kernahan. But he's got a jump away down the wicket, those kicks, Bob. Bruce Jones. Bruce Jones up to Schwab, and Schwab marks a half-back for Hawthorne. Strong mark. He plays on. He'll be shepherded by Deer, who got his number taken earlier in the quarter. And another strong mark in the defence for Carlton, this time by Dean. Peter Cameron whistling him back on the mark. It's disadvantage for side. Well, he brought him back because of Bruce Jones' actions. Ball towards left half forward, thumped away by Langford, missed by Melbourne, picked up by Tuck, his kick is a short one to centre field, or centre wing, Bacanara, tries to get clear, can't do so, off the ground from Schwab, Schwab's kick to left, to right half forward flank, uh, Dorotich will get there first for Carlton, Dorotich goes deliberately, now that is deliberate, no doubt about that, and he doesn't get penalised though, but uh, if we go back, that was so blank that this didn't matter, yeah, he could have easily passed to one of his teammates there too, Bob, 
wonder if Fitzroy's Michael Nettlecoll was watching because he was penalised against Hawthorne in the qualifying final a few years ago for a similar offence. He won that game by four points. We're talking about consistency. Madden against Curry. Madden's too tall, but he doesn't get an effective tap out. Motley dives, gets one on the back of the neck. Umpire Peter Cameron has found a free kick, or is it going to be a bat? It might be the latter. Still at Hawthorne's right half forward flank, 22 and a half minutes into the first quarter. Madden, English, over the head of Ayers, picked up by Reese Jones, fumbles, gets one in the back, should get a free kick. A free kick to Reese Jones, he's had his troubles here today, he's already been reported, and of course he's got a very difficult opponent today in Ayers. He hasn't left his side, but he's coming back, he's had a couple of kicks. He won't be out of it. McClure got under that. Ball missed by Robertson. Glasgow tries to get out of trouble. They pounce on top of him. Hawthorne looking more desperate at the moment in this uh, early part of the match, but there's a long way to go yet. It's the Carlton into the uh, change bench. Blackwell there, of course, who was a bit stunned, but he seems to be okay now. That's Diaz kick, a very high one. Doesn't, uh, that was Abbott, I should say, not a very high. I don't know if covered much distance. Di Pietro Menico over to Ayers, the man of the moment, as it goes over the half forward line, punched out by Dill as it goes for Bacanara, kicks it off the ground, it's going close to the box, in for goal. Oh, what's the fortune? That's his second. Have you noticed what's happening to the price of new cars? They keep going up and up and up, all except for Nissan. Nissan are holding the price of Pulsar down to $9,990. The only one with the power of a 1.6 litre engine, five speed transmission, luxurious interior and a price that's down to earth. Nissan Pulsar. Buy now, because even Pulsar must go up soon. Right, Paul? 24 minutes gone of this first quarter, the 1986 Grand Final. Carlton uh, in trouble now, five goals, 4.34. Hawthorne to uh, Carlton, one, three, nine points. Carlton go back into attack. Langford gets a short uh, kick, but a butte back there, taken by Platton. Platton at centre half back. Platton's gone out to the wing position. Mark taken by Gary Ayres. He was hit before covering a lot of territory. He gets dicked, but no free kick downfield. Curran doing battle with Motley, but Motley wins out. Hawthorne's tackling is good at the moment. Madden fumbles, but hits it straight to his opponent, Deer, who hits it back to Madden, who was grabbed on the leg. Wobbles the punt kick up the centre wing. Knocked away by Tuck from Melbourne. Wallace showed plenty of courage there. Loveridge is. Here's a right centre wing. Back to Russo. High kick to half forward. Brereton over the top. Madden was there. English and Platton. Platton grabbed. Didn't have the ball. Play on call. Meldrum. Right on the boundary line. Reese Jones. Caught. As I said, Hawthorne's tackling. Pretty good at the moment. Mark McClure, Carlton captain. McClure at left centre wing. Meldrum runs into trouble. Holding the ball. On the shoulder, Pete. Uh, holding the ball, Luke. Uh, well, he indicated on the shoulder. He said in the shoulder. Yeah. the shoulder. He indicated that. Oh, I see. Yes, oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. To Meldrum. Uh, to uh, Loveridge. Loveridge. Mark taken by Deer on right centre wing. Deer. What do we? He'll look for Brereton. Has to fly with Dorotich. Dorotic has done a good job there so far. Robertson to English, probably one of Carlton's best English. Bradley, plenty of room to move at right half forward flank. Abbott won't catch him. Bradley should be able to score. Out of bounds. Boundary throw in. Carlton's right forward pocket. We're a minute into time on in the first quarter. It's going to be Kernahan against Langford. Now is the ball flat? The Umpire's conferring there. Hunter over the top. Wallace, short kick. Two number fours. That's almost in the back. Umpire Peter Cameron doesn't think so. Pretty close to it, Pete. It was, wasn't it? It certainly was. I think they've been consistent in letting the game flow. There's a number of tiggy touch with free kicks that you could have picked out, but they've let them go. Good umpiring, perhaps Bob, on a grand final situation. Langford wins that one. Johnston sharks it. Snapshot. It's still in play. Not a doubt. 
the ball just dropped. Uh, free kick. Talk about uh, funny free kicks. You shouldn't have any man, should you? That's right. Let's look at that again if we have it. Might take the kick first, but we were talking about consistency before, but weren't we? Did he dive? I think he did. He's got a chance to bring up Carlton's second goal, and they badly need one at the moment. No, I don't think so. What in the goal umpire? One point kicked by David Blaskett. And that takes Carlton score to 1 4. That trail Hawthorne 5 4 at the 27 and a half minute mark. 24 points the difference. And Carlton in plenty of bother. Their forward line not looking too hot at the moment, Bob. They're well covered by this strong defence of Hawthorne. Oh, that was a free kick there. Comes out to English. He was well tackled that time by the length, but that was a great tackle. And of course, the ball will be thrown in from that uh, half back line for Carlton. It's about 75, 80 metres around from the uh, Carlton goal. Well, Kernhan actually tapped that down, picked up beautifully by uh, Reese Jones over to McClure. Goes for a pass, looking for Hunter. He's covered by New. New goes for the tap on and again. Coming into meet it is Bernie Evans. Shows too much pace for his bigger opponent. But there's Loveridge sitting back. He fumbled it. It didn't matter. He saved it going through for a goal. It's one point for Carlton. Off target, one goal, five, 11 points for Hawthorne. Five, four, 34. There's a rover going to kick the ball back in the play now. It's Loveridge. Anyone kicks in these days. He doesn't know where to go. Now he does. That means he hasn't had much practice of kicking the ball back into play. But not a bad sort of a kick from a rover. He finds Swab out there at half back. Goes for a bit of a gallop. The ball around towards the Hawthorne half forward line. And they're hot at the moment. The Hawthorne forwards are bad luck for half. But uh, passing in on that was cut from 50 metres out of running shot at goal. Dunstan and Dill. They both miss it. Dill's first to recover, but uh, can't pick it up in time, and it bounces through for a point. He's Curran missing the fact that uh, he had Burton short, and Burton was completely clear. So it's uh, one goal, five to five goals. By the short pass coming out to Tommy Alvin down there on the back pocket, goes wide, looking there for Motley. I think Motley's just given the job now of picking up the DPN of Manigo. I think you might find that uh, Motley will swap back and... Uh, just, just for the kick off, I think, Lou. 15 metre penalty there to Motley. The ball goes back now towards Ernahan and Lang, but they both split the down goes Hunter. He's covered by Wallace. Can't get clear. It's holding the ball against him. That's a good decision, too, because he had it smothered. So Wallace's kick is out wide towards the wing position. Curran in front of a great mark. He's got a beautiful pair of hands. He's in rare form in these finals, Bob uh, Curran. Yes, he's done a great job, Lou. So Curran out there on the centre wing position. And Hawthorne, 5-5 to Carlton, one goal, five. The Blues not looking too hot. Oh, great mark to Brereton. What a beauty between two of them, man. And Brereton right there on the 50-metre attacking line. Goes for a pass. It's OK. And it's found Dunstan. He's already kicked one goal off Bill, but he's a fair way out, 50 metres out, in fact. At least the Hawthorne forward line are moving yeah, around right, and leading. Rob. Yep, Carlton forward line looking hopeless. And a few of their star players are unsighted so far. Just on the 30 and a half minute mark as Dunstan comes in for goal number two. It's not a bad sort of a kick either, but one make the distance. They all fly as they go through. Bacanara flies at the goal, but it's through for one pop. So Hawthorne moving on now to five goals, 636 to come. Not looking so hot. One goal, five, 11 points. Nine halves to bring the ball back into play. Alden making the lead, but he goes to the opposite flank. Wallace, gave his opponent just a little bit of a nudge in the back there to take the grab. Wallace from half forward. Wakanara, the height, can't mark it. Harm, backs up well. Brushes the tackle aside. Likewise, Bernie Evans for Carlton. Evans clear at the 50 metre defence line. Around Russell Green. Alden at the square. Alden downfield and left half forward. Good mark to McClure. Gave Abbott the nudge onto Robertson. Robertson's pass is a shocker. And there's the siren for the end of the first quarter. As the bell sounded the end for that promising forward move from Carlton with Hawthorne leading 5-6-36 to 1-5-11 at quarter time. A great start by Hawthorne. Five goals, six to one goal, five. There was no doubt about it. Their attack looked good. And, of course, they've uh, also made a great move by putting airs on the, uh, uh, the uh, elusive and brilliant Reese Jones. And, of course, that stopped uh, one of their uh, avenues to goal. And that's put them in plenty of trouble. Their forward line is badly sagging. 
Of course, some of their star players have been missing. Vander here today, two players like Bradley and a few others. But a great performance by Hawthorne. That should give them tremendous confidence for the rest of this match. Hawthorne leading 5-6 to 1-5 at quarter time. In today's high-tech world, tyre fitting is more than just a job. At Bob Jane T-Marts, it's a highly skilled trade. That's why Bob Jane T-Marts develop young Australians like Chris Wilde through their own training scheme. It's important to you as a customer and our success as a company to always offer the best. The best personnel, the best choice of brands at the lowest prices, and above all, the best service. And the best service is what we give you at Bob Jane T-Marts. Understands the male body. Now with the complete range of aftershave and deodorants. Adidas, the men's range that performs for men who perform. Adidas. Adidas, aftershave and deodorants. Hunter Classifieds, Melbourne's 24-hour watchdog, Monday to Saturday. The hounds are round, around the clock, every morning in the sun, every evening in the Herald. Two papers for the price of one. Phone Hunter Classifieds on 652222 and sell around the clock all day. Thursday night, a turbocharged edition of Beyond 2000 looks at our favourite toy. From high-speed exotic cars to the latest off-road vehicles, we've compiled a selection of the most innovative and startling creations from the auto industry. Combine power and speed with style in a turbocharged Bentley, the fuel-efficient face of the super truck of the future, and the magnificent lines of the Vector Twin Turbo. So, fasten your seatbelts as we take it to the streets. Beyond 2000, presented by AMP, 8.30 Thursday. Coming soon to the Entertainment Centre 7, there's riotous fun with Porky's Revenge. What's going on? Then the con's on again. Sting, too. I got a ride. Australia's own, the Cool and Gatta Go. You're gonna win? Yes, yes! A fantastic tale about a fantastic tale. Splash. She's a fish. Nobody said love's perfect. Tom Cruise is losing it at the epic Australian miniseries, Sword of Honor. They all get back! Spectacular entertainment, coming soon to 7. We welcome you back wherever you may be watching our telecast around the world. I sincerely hope that you're very much enjoying Australian rules football. What a fine first quarter it was by Hawthorne, who incidentally went into this game as slight favourites. At quarter time, we find Hawthorne, 5 goals, 6, 36, leading Carlton, 1 goal, 5, 11. Main goal scorer on the ground at the moment is Hawthorne forward Gary Buccanara. He's contributed two and singles to Jason Dunstall, Dermot Brereton and Peter Curran. Whilst for Carlton, it's a different story. Paul Meldrum is their sole contributor. But it's very early days yet with just one of four great quarters of football completed. It's now return to our commentary position. Here's Peter. Right, thank you, Sandy, and the respective coaches, Alan Jeans and Robert Wall, still addressing their sides. The Hawthorne camp now breaking up, and uh, Walls continues his address, but let's get some thoughts on the first quarter of football from Bob Skilt. All around the ground, there's no doubt in the world that apart from on the scoreboard, honest that the quarter must go to Hawthorne. Uh, not only do they lead by 25 points, but uh, they've been on top right across the centre where the uh, Brownlow medalist, um, D. Peter Domenico, started off in excellent style. And on the other wing, uh, a surprise move, but one that has really come off. But uh, Gary Ayres, and, uh, by far the better of the best player on the ground in the second semi-final. That's David Rees-Jones. Starting off in the centre against Terry Wallace uh, was Wayne Blackwell, and uh, he uh, was obviously a little bit groggy, but he's back on the ground now. Robinson and McKenzie coming back to the interchange bench, and Blackwell will probably go and uh, pick up Wallace once again. And Dermot Brereton had the better of Doherty at centre-half forward, and whilst at the other end of the ground, uh, Langford made it very tough for Kernahan to get kicks at centre-half forward, likewise Mew uh, for Hunter at centre-half back, uh, full-back, I should say. Stats for the first term. Hawthorne with an advantage of 19 kicks. Carlton having four more handballs, but a lot of those under pressure. Marks equal, three kicks pretty much the same. Shots at goal, three in favour of Hawthorne. But around the ground, Hawthorne by far the better side in the first term.
second quarter of the 1986 VFL Grand Final. Hawthorne leading by 25 points, but there's a long way to go yet. Umpire Peter Cameron to bounce the ball to start proceedings. Matten's bit on top in the ruck so far over Deere, and he wins that one. Evans puts Carlton into attack. Carlton up towards the left half forward flank. Tuck and Veldrum over the top was uh, Langford. Tuck takes the hand pass from Ayers. The Hawthorne captain streaming forward. Life in the old legs yet, apparently. Tuck, short pass. Oh, Dunstall, great mark, Endley. Three marks he's taken so far. He's gone for a pass. Not a good one. Blackwell back on the field. He left uh, looking a little bit groggy in the first quarter, but seems to be okay now. Glascott. Turns back on his heels and gives it to English. Harms takes the mark. Harms at... Uh, short of the right centre wing position. Is that a mark for Elvin? I didn't think so. Neither did the umpire. Johnson could have almost got a free kick, but the umpire again and makes the call play on. Schwab should be penalised for holding the ball. I take it you don't agree with that, Bob? I did not agree at all. To me, uh, Peter and Bob, they look a little bit confused, Carl. Johnston's kick to half forward. Thumped away by Langford. Russo. Content to see the ball out of bounds. And a boundary throw and will follow at Carlton's right half forward flank. Well, Bob, not letting the Carlton Stars get out of their sight, Bob. They're tagging them all over the ground. They're sticking very close today. Mew has it knocked away by Hunter. And once again, a stalemate develops. Peter Cameron, one of the more senior men in white in VFL ranks, will bounce the ball. It looks as though McClure is virtually lining up at full forward for the moment, and Hunter coming up the ground a bit. They're trying something different. And they've got to do that when they're behind by 25 points. Hunter was the high flyer there. Blackwell affects the tackle. It's a real scramble to the start of the second quarter. Two minutes have so far gone. Two minutes gone of this second quarter, the 1986 Grand Final. And it's still uh, 25 points, the difference in favour of the Hawks. Knocked out that time uh, by Kernahan. Picked by Swabby goes for the boundary line. It's out of bounds on the full. Now there's the chance for Carlton to go deep into attack through Ben Eagles. Des English, I should say. Going through is Kernahan. A hand pass oh. coming over there to Johnson, but he couldn't uh, get out of that one. Had no hope of getting rid of the ball, and the umpire was balling up. You think it was a throw, Pete, do you? That's why I disagree with the one in the middle. If you're going to be, give one, you give the other. There's the bounce again. Well, I'll give that to Deer. Ayers gets a hurried kick coming out towards the boundary line. Deep Pieta Menico and Alvin go after it. Alvin in the front, Fozzy, but Deep Pieta Menico's right on his tail. It'll go out of bounds. Di Pietro Menico going over the line. Of course, he tied for the 1986 Brown on medal, which was a surprise. What's that again? Did he get one in the back? And we'll leave, the, leave that to you sitting at home. Back to Swab, a hurried kick, and that's what the Hawthorne are doing. They're not messing about. They're getting the ball quickly to their boot. And it's out of bounds, gradually creeping up to their half-forward line. Running now for the umpire to bring the ball back into play as we approach the three-and-a-half-minute mark of the second quarter. Matt and dominate the run, but that was a bad knockout to Russo. Russo drives it back there looking for Dunstan. And the bounce was against Dunstan, and Dool out of bounds. So it's well over there, uh, half forward line, about 40 metres out from their goal. Capacity house here today, over the 100,000 mark, I would say. And what a feeling it is to be at the 1986 Grand Final. But what a feeling it is to be at any VFL Grand Final. Monthly with a hand pass, coming back now. Tapped on again by uh, Dean. And the ball is out of bounds. So it's out of bounds about 60 metres around uh, from the Hawthorne goal. But they've been into attack for most of this game and their forward line looking good. On the other hand, Carlton's attack looks woeful. There's no coordination at all down there. Back to Dean. Dean can't get through the pack. That's Loveridge going down. They pile on top of him and the umpire once again will call it up. Been a scrambly start to this quarter. Well, it's been... Uh, well, uh, yeah, it has been a scrambly start. up again we're just over the four minute mark or approaching the four and a half minute mark of this second quarter Madden getting a lot of hit outs but not directing them well Hawthorne ball again in the forward pocket green off to his left foot duel in front of Dunstall Dunstall gets in front of him and how did he do that snap shot is a goal oh, the integration factor only from NEC computers and communication equipment must integrate fully so all NEC computers, printers, fax machines and PABXs work together and with other systems to multiply your business in your local office or around the world.
And any NEC computers and communication equipment you buy in the future will integrate fully to the integration factor, NEC. Hawthorne by 31 points at the five minute mark of the second quarter. Johnston for Carlton in possession, gets overrun. Bradley gets it out to Elvin. Still a race for Curran Cook. Loses it, picked up by English, and Michael Carter's best player onto Johnston at the back hunter. No mark. Free kick, surely. Although it maybe it penalised the side. So Carlton a chance to go deep into attack. Here it is in replay. Not much doubt about that going to Evan. Short pass. Hunter. No. Good play by Evan. Langford. Langford in left back pocket. He looked for a pass, either by foot or hand. He's gone with the foot. Curran takes the mark. Back to that same player. Langford. Wallace running at left centre wing. On Reed, one of the veterans on the Hawthorne side. Not a good pass, but it does find Brereton. Back to Reed. Have to get rid of this quickly. Hook the Buccanara. Buccanara marks and plays on. 50 metres out. He'll just about kick this. It's long. It's just about there. because they're not looking too good at the moment, Peter. Well, they all missed that. The Pieta Menigo, that's their tactics, and look at them go. Oh, that's only a free kick to Bacanara, he'll get it. So Bacanara to get the free kick out there on the centering position. Carlton making a thousand mistakes here today. And of course, Hawthorne cashing in on them. Ball tapped down by Doherty, coming back towards Motley, bounces okay, touches right on his tail as he kicks the ball back towards the centre wing position. They all get under that with plenty of Hawthorne players around. A slick hand pass from Deer. Over to DP Adamanico. Drives the ball over the half forward line. Doralich flies. Couldn't hold the mark. Going to. Oh, he took one from Doralich. Right on the chops. It's really stunned him. Oh, he's okay now. Now he knows he's got the free kick. It does help. It certainly does. A hand pass. Eid with a long one into the goal square. That's Dutch to let it. Duel, they both miss it. English going in, misses the ball. Duel plays it safe and guards it over the line and through for one point. But at the moment, at the eight and a half minute mark of the second quarter, it's all Hawthorne, 7 7 49 to Carlton, 1 5 11. And Carlton not putting up a very good performance. That's a long kick pushed out by Deer. Good play over to Wisp, mothered by uh, Matt, picked up by Ed again. Pushed away from airs by Albert. Back it comes to Bradley. I think that's about his third touch for the match. Up goes Blackwood. Couldn't hold the mark. They, they're really tackling Hawthorne. They won't let him get free. And now we see McClellan going for a long kick. And there's no one there. But Carlton, it's up target. They'll go through for one point. They've got no one up there on the forward line. And of course, when you're desperate, you go right up the ground chasing kicks, Bob. Yes, and that's when uh, the coach has got to pull him back down the ground, Lou. Well, back out wide to the... Uh, back pocket this fellow's played a fantastic game is certainly put a uh, Reese Jones out of business in the first quarter he started off well in the second so dippers on him now well back there they fly Dean couldn't hold it picked up by McClellan the veteran drives it down towards Hunter and Hugh having a great battle knocked out over it goes McGrath going to be the goal that is a big goal it didn't need that one dashing daring eye catching here's what you've been waiting for Formula Holdems an exciting new range of bars designed to set you apart. Sleek. Clever. Cute. Stylish. And very inspiring. Try one on in your colour at your Holden dealers today. Formula Holdems. They stand out in style. 
Hawthorne still leading by 31 points, and that was David Glasscock's first goal for Carlton. A badly needed one, certainly one by Deer, this knockout. Bad hand pass, though. Gives it straight to Kernahan. Well tackled, or was it in the back? No free kick. Well umpired. Abbott to half forward. Dorotich beats Brereton for it. Short pass to Reese jones to Dean. Dean on left centre ring. Dean goes for a short one as well. Tuck in the road, though, but backing up is Chris Mew. Carlton looking a little bit better. Reese oh. Jones tangles with Loveridge, and that's on the shoulder. And the 15 minute penalty as well. It's the replay now. Uh, well, Nick is on the shoulder. He's, he's not up there again. I reckon he's already been reported. He takes the hand pass. North on wingers kick tries to find Bakanara, who marks in front of Motley. Got a quite a fair game down there in attack, too. Not a bad job with 3 2 so far. I reckon. A little bit too far out to score. He's 65 metres out. Just about got it into the square. Dean, good defence by the Carlton player. It's out of bounds and a boundary throw in right forward pocket for Hawthorne. That's not a real bad kick either, him. Pete. That was a good kick, wasn't it? Must have covered a good 60 metres. 31 points the difference. Brereton and Madden. Madden. Russo. Behind, I think, or out of bounds. It's a point. So 32 points the difference. 7 8 to 2 6. Duel. Straight down the ground. Motley. He's hit Bakara back to Bradley, who's caught subsequently towards the boundary line, and it will be a throw in on centre week. Well, Bradley struggled all uh, day so far. Bobby's been really out of form. Mr. Rodney Leeds done a great job so far against Bradley. It's Madden and Deer. Neither gets a tap out of that at all. Picked up by Glascott. His kick is a short one, but it does go Carlton's way about 10 metres. Platten looks for the shepherd, doesn't get one. Can't affect a hand pass. And once again, we'll see a boundary throw in. It's on centre wing. Deer and Madden again. Schwab looks for Green. Bad hand part. Arms is right there with him. Green fumbles. Looks for a free kick. Well played, Russell Green. Under Rodney E. He did half forward. Russo. Looks for Brereton. Not a good pass. Straight to Dorothy. And he's one player you don't argue with. And certainly wouldn't pinch his beer at a punt. Dorotich to centre wing. Johnston, oh, almost a miraculous grab. Dippy and Amerigo dives on it, picked up by Johnston. Johnston's kick short to centre wing again. Funny old bounce. Who's it going to favour? Tommy Elvin. Elvin puts Carlton into attack up towards right half forward. Mew and Hunter. Mew should have taken that. Langford short. McClure and Hunter, they can wrap it. Four Carlton players are there. Hunter finally clear. It's a goal. Captain, one on the line that time. 32 points the difference in favour of Hawthorne. Into the second quarter by 13 and a half minutes. Comes Reese Jones, who's got a chance to score a goal here. A long shot, and look at this one go. It's a goal. You want a video recorder that puts more into your video? You get them from National. From National. Wednesday, Paul Newman stars with Ed Asner in a different kind of war story. The lowest income per capita, the highest rate of unemployment in the city. One on and off making his last stand against a crazy world when they come to attack Fort Apache, the Bronx. 8.30 Wednesday on 7. Great goal kicked by Rich Jones to make the difference 26 points, so they're still within striking distance. Gun with a long way to go on this grand final of 1986. Matt knocked out by Deer. Pushed off by Wallace, doing a great job on the centre. Gets a hand pass out to Platt. Platt under pressure. Oh, he was grabbed. That'll be home. My man, I reckon. He hung on too long. And the little rover, the long-haired rover for Hawthorne, uh, Johnny Platt will take that free kick at half forward, about 65 metres out from goal. He's looking for Brown. And he's found him. Now, Brown will be uh, 40 metres out by the time he kicks this one. The angle a bit difficult. Dorotich on the mark, uh, yeah. nobody picking up Brereton. There's the shot coming up from Brereton now. There it is on its way. A strong mark 
taken there by Buckley down there with me. Right in the uh, goal square. Now Peter is steady, Lou. Well, they've played uh, pretty uh, raggedy football so far, Peter, above. And uh, they haven't got much system going at all. But uh, let's hope they can settle down and make a game of this in front of this big crowd here today. Langford. We saw that, uh, what's his name, was the block that time. Kern hand by ears. That allowed Langford to take an easy mark. One for a short pass. Punched out by Duel away from Dunstall. Coming in to meet it now as Blackwood walks nicely in a bit of trouble. Followed by Ayers. Ayers doing a great job. Ayers birdie deep field a minute ago. A snap at goal. Will it make the distance? It does, but it's on target. And it's out of bounds. That will be a throw in right against the point post. Deep in Hawthorne's attacking zone. And the Hawthorne coach looking pretty worried. But he's side uh, well in front by 26 points. But there's a long way to go yet. Knocked out by Matt, picked up by Dean, a hand pass, a good one to Motley. Motley down there on the back pocket, I must agree with you, Bob, they're looking better now. We see Reese Jones take that long hand pass, and there's a long kick looking for Malcolm. Tuck and Malcolm both missed that one, Russo picked it up beautifully, one hand away from Evans. Goes for the kick, airs, flies, did he get it in the back of Reese Jones? The umpire said no, backing up as usual as Wallace. Drives the ball down towards half forward, coming in to meet him now as uh, Dorothy falls over. In goes Motley to back him up, gives him a bad hand pass. The ball still in play on that half forward on the umpire with Florida. A bit of a mess up by the two Carlton defenders then. They made hard work of that. So 16, just on 17 minutes gone of the second quarter. Three goals, six, 24 Carlton to Hawthorne, 7 8 50. Knocked away by Madden and out of bounds. So a throw at this time, still inside the 50 metre line, so a chance for Hawthorne to go further forward. With Carlton manning up better in the latter part, or midway through this turf, Madden's hit out again. Not well directed, Blackwell tries to get clear. Mm -hmm. Opportunity to affect the hand pass. Good play by Platten to keep it away from Motley, it's out of bounds again. Well, I know Carlton are bumbling a lot, but that's due to the pressure that Hawthorne are putting on them all the time. Yes, Hawthorne's tackling has been excellent, Lou. They haven't allowed the Carlton to get clear and break up the play at all. Current and Madden. Out to Reed. High kick. Over the top is Alvin. And that is a trip, is it not for English? No. Not seen by the umpire. Back on Ara for goal number four. He's got it, I think. We'll wait on the umpire. It's a goal. So I'm afraid you're going to have to come with us. I hope you have a good attorney. Best man I can think of is me. Classic mystery and suspense returns. For the first time, I know what it's like to be the accused. For the first thrilling time on television, the Tuesday movie at 8.30, Perry Mason returns. Next Saturday, live from Perth's Subiaco Oval, comes the Battle of the Premiers. The grand final champions of Victoria and Western Australia clash to decide the best. The Battle of the Premiers, live 4.30 Saturday on 7. Four goals to Gary Bacanara after a controversial decision. Picked up by Deer. Past Curran, past Dean, past Reese Jones. Brewer went through pretty solidly. Down goes Evans. Ball socket back to centre field. Deer and Madden. Both fumble. Free kick going Carlton. Now going Hawthorne's one. Bob. Yes, Deer was held there. Rick Deer at the circle. Platten. Oh, and then he got up high enough. Harms to Dean. Dean short pass over the head of Alvin for him it was intended. Deep in Domenico. We get around him. He does. The pass is out wide. Leading out is Bacanara. Motley puts him down effectively. Ayers loses out. Picked up by Motley. Motley a short pass. Johnston at left centre wing. Abbott standing on the mark. Johnston short pass. Blackwall. Has he marked it? No. I he played it. I think he held it long enough. I think that play. If you'd catch one of my checks, Lou. Oh, that was a mark. Blackwell looking okay after that heavy knock he got in the first quarter. Hunter. That was a strong mark. It takes it a going, Bob, going after that one. Uh, he's a great player, Hunter, and he's got tremendous courage. He has got courage, hasn't he, Hunter? To uh, see Dipper coming at you. He's been pretty well held today by Mew, just the same. Hunter, a chance for his first goal, and Carlton's fourth. It's coming around. But not enough. That's his third possession, incidentally, Freak uh, Hunters. Back after a hamstring. Hawthorne lead by 31 points. It's Chris Langford. Kick dropping short. Harms takes it. Now, chance for a Carlton score. 
Barnes is an excellent kick. Still over 50 metres out. He's gone long. He's had a real go at it. Looking for Kernahan or Hunter at the back. The Hawthorne player might have put that through. One point. Well, Kernahan surely didn't expect to be paid that. 26 to 56. 30 points the difference. And we're just on the uh, 20 and a half minute mark of this second quarter. Hawthorne still looking good. Short pass marked down there in the back pocket by Rodney. Ead. When you look through the Hawthorne lineup, they haven't got a weak player on their side. Over it goes to Swap. Swap's kick is not a good one. English goes down. He's a strong player to David. Couldn't get clear. Wallace doing a great job on the centre as the ball comes out to Alvin and Di Pietro Menigo. Holding on that time, Di Pietro Menigo. And Alvin will get the free kick. He's got it all the way that time. Played a great game so far, Di Pietro Menigo, Bob. So Alvin with the free kick. Paul Raquel on that half back line. 21 minutes gone of the second quarter of the 1986 Grand Final. Flying high was Kernahan. Carlton players messing themselves up. They've been doing that all day, not talking much amongst themselves. On the other hand, uh, Hawthorne doing everything right. It'll be a ball up. Round about the centre wing position. Knocked on that time by Matt, but it was ricocheted back, kicked off the ground by Harms. Coming in the middle of this lovely bump of the ball. I don't blame him either. As he goes after the game, but the Terrier won't give it up. The umpire said it's holding the ball against him. So it'll be Black will take the free kick right on the 50 metre attacking line. He hesitated. Hutto having a bit of trouble getting away from you. He's had him well covered. Hunter's only had three possessed. Now he's cleared to the chance to mark. He does. Short pass. Dangerous, but it'll be okay. And the mark taken down there by Glaskin. Now he's only about uh, five or six metres out, but the ankle's pretty acute, as you can see there on the screen. But Carl badly needing a goal here. Should still keep it down Should. They're trailing by 30 points. This will make the difference 24. But he's successful with his kick, of course. Let's see what happens with it. Oh, he's missed it. They should kick him, Bob, but they don't. They don't lose the uh, premiership. That's please. right, 27 plays, 56, a difference of uh, 29 points. Into this second quarter by 22 and a half minutes. And we wait now for the ball to come back into play. Well, Hawthorne have got good players all over the ground. Of course, their tackling has been superb here today, and they've put Carlton under pressure right throughout the match. for 50 metres out, but once again the Blues are on target, and it's through for another point. So that's not helping their cause. Bad kicking, three goals, 10, 28, count to Hawthorne, eight goals, 8, 56, and we're just over the 23-minute mark of the second quarter. This time you go short and finds Richard Loveridge. Loveridge also going short, looking for Schwab, backing up his ears. Gives it straight to Evans, says thanks very much. Oh, misjudged the flight of the ball there. It's out of bounds in Carlton's left forward pocket. That's got kind of just about had a grab at that. Oh, oh, definitely ball. steady. They're playing better football at the moment. Their attack doesn't look too good to me, Bob. Just the same. No, they're, they're struggling to kick goals. But around the ground, Lou, they only need a, a quick goal and get a lot of confidence. That loses out to Matten, who in turn has it knocked from him, but it's picked up by Melbourne, and that's a goal. Melbourne's second goal, and Carlton coming back as Bob Stilton indicated a moment ago, 14 34 to 88 56. An excellent goal by Paul Melvin. Uh, good play by Justin Madden. Uh, to get it out to him as you see Scott get the short kick forward. Button has the ball punched away. <laughs> Not in the throw, but uh, nonetheless it was good play. Across to Melvin again and on replay, Melvin putting it through for four points. Second goal, 24 and a half minutes into the second quarter. Johnston's kick a short one. Ears get through some pretty heavy traffic. Beautiful smother by Johnston. Ears got one in the back. Picked up by Tuck. Good tackle, just about caught with the ball. Dippy Domenico and Alvin. Dorotic and Burke. Dorotic straight from the wing. Carlton fans finding voice. Hunter over the top. No, Mew in front. Great mark by Mew. Mew steady. In the crisis, out to Loveridge. Loveridge at the right half back flank for Hawthorne. Loveridge has gone up towards the wing, looking for Green or Schwab. 
neither of those is going to get anywhere near it. And it beats uh, Schwab and also Reese Jones over the line. 22 points in it. So Carlton have made up three in this quarter so far, which has been in progress 25 and a quarter minutes. Madden doing well on the ruck. He's really well on top of the air today. Reese Jones takes the hand pass at centre wing. He's gone for a pass. He's got a mark. I think it is to McClure. Actually, Matt has done a pretty good job on the ruck, Bob. And this is played well, Lee. Kernahan over the top. No. Hit the behind post, so it will be touched, and that should be out of bounds. So boundary throw it. Carlton's left foot pocket. A real chance for the Blues to get right back into this grand final. Langford and Kernahan over the top is Hunter. Glascott has it knocked away by Russo. It's out of bounds, but still in Carlton's left forward pocket as we approach the 26-minute mark of the turn. Tension right on now as Hawthorne have to defend desperately. Hunter, Kernahan, Mew, Abbott. Still a short kick. English that gives it almost to Peter Cameron. Melbourne has been a good player. Gets clear. Terry Watts. This battle's played a great game. He's playing at the centre, but he's all over the ground. Wallace over to Mew. Back to Lovelace. 50 metre defence line. Drives the ball out wide, looking for Deep Vieta Menigo. Tapped on by Quinn. Beautiful play. Picked up nicely by Deep Vieta Menigo. Bradley not having a, a lucky day today as Buckenara picks it up down and looks down to Abdul. And the playing doormat for the other fellow. The young fellow's got him. He caught him. He couldn't get clear. They give him a free kick. I thought it was a good, a, a good tackle, bud. It was a beautiful tackle, Luke. Sympathising with old age there. That's a good tackle. I don't think he tripped him. He did trip himself. OK, the ball back there towards centre-half back. English backing up well. Tart, the Bob said, looking a lot better now. Down it goes. Punched out by Mew. Coming in to meet it now is uh, Russell. Overruns the ball. Kicked off the ground by McClure. Back to Tuck. Tucked down with a good hand pass to Russell. Over to Wallace. He's gone. Down he goes. And Carp starting to tackle better now. And the umpire will ball it up. I must agree, Bob, they're looking a lot better. Of course, the difference only 22 points now. Nothing at all, Luke. If Carlton get a goal just before uh, half time, that'll make the world of difference when they come out in the second half. Matt dominating the ruck. Number 44 against Deer. Knocked out by McClure. Glasgow gets a hurried kick. It'll be a free kick to Matt. He's right on the edge of the square. That's about 65 metres out from goal. I think it'll be too far for this big fellow to kick a goal from there. And of course, he's, uh, he's going for the long kick right into the goal square. McClure flies. Two Carlton players fought each other that time. That's three for one point. So the difference, 21 points. Four goals, 11.35. Carlton to Hawthorne, eight goals, 8.56. And the Blues are looking a lot better now. They're certainly starting to make a game. We'll wait for Chris Mew to bring the ball back into play. He goes out there towards that uh, half uh, back line and a good mark to uh, Langford. He's had uh, Kernahan not covered all day. He's had no influence at all. The ex uh, crow into a short pass. It's OK and marked there by E. He's on the uh, half back line. The kick by E. Punched away by Reese Jones. Not a bad one. He's in trouble, but gets the ball back to Glasgow, kicks it back, and kernahan has got it from 50 metres out. Creeping over the mark that time was Rodney Ead, the umpire bringing him back. Now, Kernahan could kick this distance, so we see Hunter making a lead there, but it's ignored, that's so, all There's the zone, there's the kick on its way, run back the distance. And uh, the scores are here at half-time, we see... Uh, Hawthorne in front, eight goals, 8.56 to go, four goals, 11.35. Well, Dool looking very worried, and so he should be, because even though Dunstall's only kicked one goal, he's had plenty of trouble trying to hold the young fella. A much better performance by Carlton towards the second half of that quarter. Hawthorne starved, no doubt uh, Buccanara kicking four goals, not forgetting a few other players. But I think the most impressive thing about uh, Hawthorne's play is the fact they've tackled so hard and they've had all the Carlton stars covered. And uh, when you start doing that for Carlton, you block their stars. You find that they're in plenty of trouble. They did bounce back as Bobby Skilk did predict and looking a better side to come into this second half. 21 points the difference at half time. 8-8-56 to 4 11, 35 
When it comes to your insurance, there's a name you need to know. I've been insured with SIO for years. Not long ago, I had an accident. A bad one. The car was a right. Boy, was I glad I had an SIO agreed value policy. Instead of just getting market value, which could have been a much lower figure, I got back the full sum insured from SIO with no hassles. So if you have an accident, big or small, it's great to know with SIO, you'll be well looked after. They're okay. This is what it's all about. The sharp end. That's what I joined for. This is one million dollars, and bow repairs will use it to prove they've got the lowest prices on Australia's best range of tires. How? Well, buy any tyre from Bow Repairs, then if you find the same tyre advertised anywhere else for less, Bow Repairs will not only refund the difference, they'll double it. Only Bow Repairs guarantee the lowest prices or double the difference. Try them. Bow Repairs. You can count on the boys in blue. Street, I'm afraid you're going to have to come with us. I hope you have a good attorney. Best man I can think of is me. Classic mystery and suspense returns. For the first time, I know what it's like to be the accused. For the first thrilling time on television, the Tuesday movie at 8.30, Harry Mason returns. Next Saturday, live from Perth's Subiaco Oval, comes the Battle of the Premiers. The grand final champions of Victoria and Western Australia clash to decide the best. The Battle of the Premiers, live 4.30 Saturday on 7. So Carlton outscoring Hawthorne in that quarter. They kicked 3 6 to 3 2 to make up four points and now trail by 21 points. For Hawthorne, Buccanara has four, Dunstall two, singles to Brereton and Curran, to Carlton Meldrum two, and one to Reese Jones and one to Glasgow. Bob Skilton, your summary of the first half. And the fact that uh, Sidney's scoring shots to uh, 15 is indicative of the way the play has gone. Pete, uh, in general play, Carlton came right back into the game in that quarter, and as we watch some of the highlights, a beautiful goal by Jason Dunstall, and Dunstall has kicked two goals against Dool, Buccanara with four, and it's been a, a good effort by the Hawthorne forwards. Uh, but at the other end of the ground, Carlton have struggled, but they've had plenty of chances. They have got the ball down there on numerous occasions. Kernahan almost took a couple of marks, but just didn't quite hold them long enough. Mew has done a good job tapping the ball away from Hunter, but on that occasion we saw Glascott raving beautifully and come through and put it through for a goal. And uh, I did have the feeling as the longer that quarter progressed, the better Carlton were playing. Their back line had tightened, English had uh, gotten on top of Platten and was continually taking the ball away. And although Wallace was doing well in the centre, I did feel that Carlton were having the better of the play. Uh, Madden well on top uh, in the ruck. Um, Greg Deer not playing anywhere near as well as he has so far. And he is a great throw by Madden across to <laughs> Meldrum. And it was an excellent uh, flick pass, whatever you want to call it, as we see now the Hawthorne dressing rooms. And uh, they'd be a little bit tired. And they'd be a little bit worried about the fact that they didn't go on with the game as well as they might in the second quarter with a 25-point lead at quarter time and uh, 21 points now. I think uh, they'd probably be reasonably happy, but uh, Carlton had plenty of opportunities but did not capitalise on the opportunities that they could have had. All right, well, there it is. The half-time score, 8-8-56 Hawthorne, but Carlton coming back 4-11-35 to trail by only 21 points as we take a break. And we'll be back with the spectacular half-time entertainment in just a minute. the laughter in your face I can call you on the phone but when it ends we're still alone I need to say I love you face to face I love you face 
Have you noticed what's happening to the price of new cars? They keep going up and up and up, all except for Nissan. Nissan are holding the price of Pulsar down to $9,990. The only one with the power of a 1.6 litre engine, five speed transmission, luxurious interior and a price that's down to earth. Nissan Pulsar, buy now because even Pulsar must go up soon. Right, Paul? Good news, guys. Bleach is back in a big way at Just Jeans. Check out these Oki Check Easy Fits. They're built for comfort, not speed. So who's in a hurry? Pick up the essentials at Just Jeans. 7.30 Thursday. I'm looking for love. Well, some mothers do have them. Well, I've never heard that before, I must I might need a bit of help. No! Some mothers do have them at the new time, 7.30 Thursday, followed by Are You Being Served? And we welcome you back to the MCG. About to get underway is the Big Game Spectacular, featuring 1,000 performers and crew, 200 gymnasts and trampolinists, 500 aerobic dancers, 100 dancers, 100 students, and a crew of 150. Ladies and gentlemen, Foster's Lager proudly presents the 1986 Foster's VFO Grand Final Spectacular.
Southern Cross. The land of the Southern Cross. There's a fear in the land of the Southern Cross. That is the largest Australian flag ever made. It took 250 hours and measures 50 metres by 25 metres.
flags, one enormous Australian flag, and more than 1,000 performers leaving the MCG and a standing ovation for the big game spectacular. And what a big game it is. We'll be back with the second half of all the action in just a moment. The lion is out on the prowl. We've got the muscle and the strength right now. There's more power than before in our world-class Commodore. Have you seen the way that Holden's looking now? Look at Holden's unbeatable four-cylinder range. Marina, Australia's most economical five-door wonder. Astra, the clever hatch that's packed with features. Camira, the most economical car in its class. And Commodore, Australia's best-performing family car. The stunning European design Piazza. And Calais, Australia's first luxury turbo. Now we've got the power. range of aftershave and deodorants. Adidas, the men's range that performs for men who perform. Adidas. Adidas, aftershave and deodorants. Not all small business people have been forced to tighten their belts. Some have found a more efficient way to trim their expenses. Get on the phone and get on with business. Kyneton, Victoria, June 22, 1945. Two baby girls born just feet apart at almost the same time. This isn't the child they showed me in the hospital. They've given you the wrong baby. Now, the true story of the world's most intriguing custody battle. The haunting account of a bizarre mystery that has never been resolved. Premiering Sunday and Monday at 8.30, the year's most involving miniseries, Who's Baby? On 7. Wednesday, Paul Newman stars with Ed Asner in a different kind of war story. The lowest income per capita, the highest rate of unemployment in the city. One honest cop making his last stand against a crazy world when they come to attack Fort Apache, the Bronx. 8.30 Wednesday on 7. Welcome back to the Melbourne Cricket Ground as we from the city centre and the art centre back to the MCG itself which is jam-packed and likewise the car park here this afternoon. Statistics to half-time as we check on them now with comment from Triple Gun Low Middle of Oxford. Hawthorne having had more kicks uh, uh, Bannies at 21 there three more marks uh, two more free kicks to Carlton 15 to 13. Hawthorne having more handballs in the second term and having an advantage of two there hit outs Justin Madden well on top there 24 to 10 shots at goal 16 apiece and I did have the feeling that the Carlton had steadied in the latter stages of that the second turn and uh, I think that if Hawthorne wanted to maintain that ascendancy they must put a couple of quick ones on the board because I have the feeling that if Carlton were to kick that first goal their confidence would soar and they would be right back into things uh, in the semi-final two weeks ago Terry Wallace struggled a little bit but today with 15 possessions to half time it's been a typical Terry Wallace performance and he's well on top in, in the centre. His opponent Blackwell did the uh, a heavy one but it uh, not, not matters not. Peter Swab has done a great job so far against Wayne Johnston. Johnston a dominating player in the uh, first and second semi-final but Swab with the 10 possessions so far. Gary Buckenau 11 possessions but more important of that 11 possessions four goals two on the board and Gary Buckenau a very damaging player. And Robert D. Pietromenico on the wing 12 possessions and uh, he has uh, shown tremendous form. A little bit quieter, his possessions in the second term were not quite as effective as during the first quarter and uh, in fact Carlton's disposal overall improved whereas Hawthorne's fell away. Paul Meldrum improved in the second term, two excellent goals and he's got eight possessions with five kicks and three handballs so far. 
uh, Meldrum very dangerous. David Glascott likewise, uh, he kicked up an excellent goal at a time when Carlton needed a lift. It was David Glascott who took that ball off the hands of the pack and of his 10 possessions has kicked one goal too. Justin Madden, an excellent luck player. 21 hit, hit outs, uh, four kicks and three handballs. One of them resulted in a goal from Paul Meldrum and Justin Madden, a very dangerous player. Doherty took a good steady in the second term uh, and he was well down against Burton but uh, Doherty came back and uh, one clearing dash uh, down the wing I thought was the sort of thing that does lift the side. Uh, I do believe that uh, it, the first, first five minutes of this game in this third term very vital. Well, Peter Donegan and Peter McKenna may agree. Gentlemen downstairs. Yes, Pete. Well, Peter McKenna can count and come back. Well, this is the quarter that will make or break uh, the game because Carlton have to be with them, Peter, three-quarter time. If they're not with them, if Hawthorne have got this break, I don't think they can beat them. The bounce of the ball about to take place, but some fascinating duels out there. Well, some marvellous duels going on, but Carlton have to get a lot more out of their forwards. Curtahan, McClure, Hunter, etc. The ball's being belted up there. They showed a bit in that quarter, but they, that Hawthorne defence is very tough, and the tackling of Hawthorne has been very, very strong. All right, Pete, the championship quarter of the grand final coming up. Back to Peter Landy in the commentary box. Thank you, Peter. Just about set for the third term. About John Russell having a good look around. Third quarter of the 86 grand final between Hawthorne and Carlton. Hawthorne leading by 21 points, but Carlton outscored them in the second quarter. Knocked down by Hawthorne's deer to Rodney E. It's a high kick, and Ernie Eve was too happy with that. And an easy mark taken by Wayne Harms in front of Russell Green. He shook his head when the ball left his boot. Good smother, or attempted smother by Russo. Sees the ball into the arms of uh, Loveridge, up the half forward. Doritich taps it further forward for Bradley. Oh, beautiful intercept from Ede, and then he kicks it off the ground, into the goal square. Dunstall gets there, here's the one that Hawthorne needed. He can put it to and he has! Great play by Rodney Ede, and that brings up Hawthorne's ninth goal, 9 8 62 to 4 11 35. Well, that's the one they wanted, Bob Hawthorne. Great job in the first uh, half. Uh, his job, as we watch on replay, and Jason Dunstall, first on the scene, and he kicks it beautifully. And here again is Rodney Ede putting the ball forward. He took the ball out of the centre in the first place, and he was just decked in the middle of the ground. Uh, and, uh, not a real heavy one, but uh, uh, by having a word to Wayne Johnston now. And uh, Rodney E did a magnificent job in the first half against Craig Bradley, and he looks like he's carried it on in this quarter. Peter Cameron had quite a few words to say, so a little bit of time on being added here. Of course, until the ball is bounced, the clock is stopped. Still talking. Carlton support is not happy. One and uh, just over one and three quarter minutes have gone in the third term. Russo sharking Madden's hit outs as he has done quite a lot today. Up the half forward, Bacanara in front of Dean. He's got Dean on him now. Not, uh, Monthly, Pete. Yes, they had him on late in the second quarter, I thought, Bob. And they swapped back again after that. So Bacanara, who's kicked four, towering punt kick into the goal square. And it's knocked through for a point, or is it out of bounds? It's out of bounds, Hawthorne's right forward pocket. Out of bounds in that forward pocket, right against the point post. 35 plays, 62 in favour of Hawthorne. Grabbed by uh, Curran, tries to spin it out of the pack, run into Doritich. Doritich knocks the ball out. He was grabbed when he didn't have it. And Doritich will take the free kick. Can't need a goal here quickly. To get the penalise aside, Lou. It did, didn't it? Well, they were away and running, weren't they? Doritich drives the ball out to the centre wing position, but no one there for Hawthorne. Meldrum comes in, but he's smothered. In goes Kernahan, copped uh, Loveridge a bit high, but the umpire didn't think it was a free kick, so it'll be a ball up towards the centre wing position. So the difference now, uh, what, 27 points, Pete, is it? Yes, Luke. That's a good start for Carter, for Hawthorne. Knocked out by Matt over the Wears. Ayers gets the ball back to Buckenau. He's a dangerous player down there. He's already kicked four goals. But they could easily kick one from here. He's about 45 metres out from goal. What a brilliant game today, this fellow. West next West Australia. Give him a short pass there to, uh, to Brown, who uh, is in a better position, but about the same distance out. Would have trusted Buckenau having a shot, Pete, rather than Brewer. But let's see what Brewer can do with it. He's a pretty good kick, just the same. Oh, there's a fight on. Yeah, there's a bit of a box on down there between uh, 
Evans and uh, Lovery uh, Brassard. Running on Brewerton. And that was a very vital goal that kicked by uh, Hawthorne. Within two minutes of the start of this third quarter, there's the kick on its way, and look at this one go, and what a goal! Well, that's making it a little tough for Carlton now. So it's 10 goals, 8.68, Hawthorne for Carlton, the left four goals, 11.35. Excellent play by Hawthorne there. And they're really teaming well together, and what a beautiful kick from just short of the 50-metre mark. Dermot Brewitt right through the centre. Second goal, and Hawthorne second this quarter. Four and a quarter minutes have gone in the third term. Madden thumps it down again, this time Arms had it and then lost it. Russo again sharks up the mark taken at centre field by Curran. On to Green. Bacanara again, no mark this time, hotly caught. Bacanara spins out, got a kick at it, smothered by Alvin. Platten can't take it. Alvin grabbed with not in provision, I would have thought. You were right there, Pete. Uh, I think I missed that one. There was no doubt that Alvin was bad. Pretty dippy at Amerigo is in a bit of trouble there. One on the hand, I think. The trainers come out to him now. Or did he get one in the eye? He looks a little sore, whichever way it goes. English has his kick smothered on this occasion. There was a fresh air shot. Alvin doesn't get a good bounce. Russell off the ground. A oh, good tackle on uh, Motley. Intercepts well. We'll get clear of D, uh, Green over the head of Evans. He should be able to get clear of uh, Greg Deere. Oh, good tackle by the big fellow. That was well done. I'm sure James would be very happy with that. Yeah. A great tackle. Charlton is very man. frustrated too. That's not a good sign. No apologies to Greg Deere. Who contested this ruck deal with Madden. Madden's won most of them today. Bradley. Bit more. Look at Dipper's eye. It's uh, bleeding profusely. The right one, I think. Might be able to get a shot in a minute. And a good mark taken by Langford. Langford to centre wing. Russo. Over the half forward line. Loose ball. It's gone down there for Hawthorne by Dunstall. And it's over the boundary line in front of Bacanara. It will be thrown into the 50 metre line. And Dipper might be coming off the ground, is he? I wouldn't think so, Pete. Probably have to drag him off. Madden in front again. Palms it beautifully down to Motley. Knocked away from Kerner, hand by Abbott. Chance for Green. He gets there first. Intercepting the hand passes. He draw Carlton, though, and the mark taken by English. 33 points the difference in favour of Hawthorne. English drives the ball back to win the wing position. Punched out that time by... Uh, by Hawthorne, that was Adler getting out, the umpire has caught now, he's not going to play. He had no notice of the beforehand, though. Yeah, he's going to ball it up. It'll be a ball up on the set, centre wing position. The whistle had gone well before the ball had come out. So it's a ball up on that centre wing position with Hawthorne, 33 points in front. Knocked out by Matt, but once again it goes to Tuck, picked up by you, who's played a slashing game here today. Missing the ball that time was Karen Alvin and D.P. and Amanigo having a great battle. It's Alvin coming in. He's done pretty well today since uh, quarter time. But the kick is not too good. Smothered by Deer, picked up by Kerhan. Couldn't get clear. He's had a quiet day too as the ball goes back there. And De Wallace once again gets a hurried kick to flat. But it's a fumble and the ball is out of bounds on the centre wing position. Wallace, play, Wallace playing a superb game in the centre. Number 16 for Hawthorne. Kinsey warming up on the boundary line, number 45. Well, they want someone out there to take a mark down there on that forward. They've got no one down there at all. Knocked on by Swap. Swap uh, clear. Swap's kick is over the half forward line in front of Dorovich. Tapped on by Brown. There's DP and Amanigo going for run. He's caught it. On the shoulder. Too high. Too high against Alvin, but he collared him in his tracks, but he couldn't get the free kick. Well, if you watch it on replay, he did tackle him too high. And here it is now. There's no doubt that we'll the tackle was too high. Bradley off and Robertson on for Carlton. Well, Bradley's had a very ordinary day today. And so is his other pro to make. Look at that eye of the Pierre Domenicos. Kernahan hasn't played much better either. So D. Pierre Domenico from about 50 metres out. Let's see whether the 1986 Brownlow medalist can uh, kick this goal. He's going to have a shot. He's pretty confident. But he's hooked it up there towards Browder. Tapped on by Dunstall, backing up 
Travis Motley grabs it on the boundary line, falls over, still going out to come pick it up, and well smothered by Dunstall. Clapton goes over the line. It's finally cleared out that time by Dool. Now kicked off the ground by uh, Bernie Evans. And there's a mark to Black. I think that knock that he got early in the game stunned him, but he's been out of uh, hasn't been in the picture very much. Over it goes now. The basket showing place. He's grabbed. Oh, they're tackling beautiful. That was a good one by Lovridge. Swab's hurt, he's got one on the knee, but he got it out to Loveridge, okay, out it comes to Ayres. Ayres out there on that half-back line, looking for a lead. But Hawthorne playing the strong football of Brown, getting away from Doris, takes a good mark, and then got the pretty heavy bump from D.P. Pierre 60 metres out, 65 metres out, goes for a short pass. Bacanara tapped it in beautifully, but the umpire ruled it's out of bounds. Oh, gee, that was pretty close. So it's out of bounds, about 45 metres around from the Hawthorne goal as we approach the nine-and-a-half-minute mark of this third quarter. 35 plays, 68 in favour of the Hawks. And they're starting to look very good for this 1986 flag. Carlton have got to do a few uh, drastic uh, moves out to try and lift their team because they're playing poorly. Then again, we're taking credit away from Hawthorne. They're doing a superb job here as Diaz smothers the ball, gets it back to Curran. Glaskett's there with him. And the umpire will ball it up right off the 50-metre attacking line for Hawthorne. So one of George Stone having a few more words to Dippy Domenico as Bradley is spoken to on the bench. Uh, he's got an injured hand or whatever. Madden wins that one again. Last one is well caught by Gary Ayres. Down goes Reese Jones, and once again a stalemate. According to the umpire, it's going to be a bounce at Hawthorne's right half forward flank. Madden and Deer. Won by Deer that time. It was picked up by Dean. Dean's kicked to centre wing. Johnston was the flyer. Ball beats Hunter over the boundary line in front of Chris Mew. And it's going to be a bounce. We throw in again. Ten and three quarter minutes gone, third quarter, 86 grand final. Madden with Deer. And hit Madden on the head. Luckridge grabbed well by Meldrum. Schwab dives on top of it for Hawthorne. Good soccer tactics by Meldrum. Gets clear. Ayers has got him, has he? Holding the ball, dropping the ball. No. Good uh, tackle by Hawthorne. He took the ripper. Advantage rule played. Luckridge plays on because umpire Cameron had played a free kick. That's still in. Oh yes, well spoken. Good talking by the Hawks, Luke. Well, actually, Dill stopped there from it. I don't know why. Might have been the old Leonard Dirtrick, was it? Well, I think the kindness of Bruce Dill, uh, Lou, a uh, very, very fair player right, right throughout. And grand finals are not Bruce Dill doesn't alter his game. Bruce Dill's 359th league game. Dunstall's kick is off the target. Or is it coming around? It might be a goal. It's a goal. No matter how you plan to spend your retirement, one thing you're going to want is security. And that's exactly what Westpac's Club 55 offers. An investment package that gives you a high rate of interest paid monthly. Free advice on anything to do with your retirement or your money. Excellent travel benefits. And free access to all the advantages of our national electronic banking system. Most of all, it gives you a secure start to the rest of your life. Club 55 from Westpac. The bank. That was Dunstall's fourth goal. As Hawthorne leads 74 to 35. Picked up by Evans, but the mark is taken by Abbott. It was a play on call. Knocked away by Dorotic from Motley. Now he has played it, actually. Motley's mark, half-back in pursuit. Brereton, he's gone out wide. Dipper puts in the body well. It rebounds to Alvin, who also goes down. Robertson and Dippy the Benico wrestle. Alvin comes out with the ball. Wallace on centre wing. Good play by D.P. Domenico. He put pressure on him. Yes, otherwise he would have taken a certain mark. Wallace's kick to Brereton. Alvin and Dorotic might be content to see it over the line. They do. It's a boundary throw. Well, Carlton bumping badly, not playing with any confidence at all. And, of course, it's the strong tackling of Hawthorne. It's brought balance to about all day, except for about 10 minutes into that second quarter. Ball back into play again. Knocked out by Matt. Oh, we see Evans cop in the face. And Bernie Evans will take the free kick on the 50-metre defence line. But Carlton, I think, have only had the ball over their half four line twice this quarter. Up goes Blackwell, couldn't hold the mark. That's been there for quite some time. Johnson in trouble. Finally gets a hurried kick back, looking for Madden, and the big fellas grab the mark out there in the centre wing with this to hand pass to Johnson. And they get the ball over their half forward line. Coming out now is Hunter, but good play on the part of you. Knocked it out. Bernie Evans got one from Russell. Couldn't get clear out to Melbourne. They're smothered. They can't uh, get out of these packs of gun. They've got no hope. Russell got one in the face. The umpire will ball it up. Right, it gets you right in the face. Certainly 
they did. But the tackling of, uh, of Hawthorne is really ferocious, Bob. They sort of tap dive on the ball and uh, then they kick it off the ground. They've been tremendous and you can't uh, underrate the estimate of the game of Rodney Eade either, Lou. Certainly played a great game. Back it goes to Swab. Platten is the last one to kick the ball back over the centre line. Dean goes to the mark, couldn't hold it. Cameron won't give in. That's the form of ball for today. They're really uh, worked up as we see Green go for uh, a hand pass, but it's intercepted. And the ball driven back there by Carlton over their half forward line. Punched out again by Langford. Swab taps it over now to Weed. It comes back to Johnson in plenty of trouble. Finally over to McKenzie. McKenzie's kick is not a good one. A chance for Gernahan. Didn't go after the ball. Picked up by Atwood out wide. And there's Birdie Di Pietro Manigo going after it. He couldn't pick that one. It's Alvin coming out of the pack. Showing a lot of pace over to Blackwell. Di Pietro Manigo nearly grabbed him a shot at goal. But it's on target. And through for one quarter. That's their first ball for the quarter. Good pressure by Di Pietro Manigo there. And he might have got a cramp. 11 goals, 8.74 Hawthorne. Looking really good to Carlton. Four goals, 12.36 into this third quarter of the 1986 grand final by just on 15 minutes to wait now for the ball to come back into play by Mew. Drives it out there towards the uh, half-back. Well, that's Clatton going up high. Play on. Trying to claim the mark as Reese Jones, but he can finally gets his kick over the half four line. Pushed out by Mew. He's had a well cover today to love reach from Swab. Back it goes to Rodney, and he's played a superb game. He hasn't put a foot wrong all day, that fella, Bob. What an excellent game, Lou. He's put, he put Bradley right out of business before he was taken off the ground. And once more, he's got kicks himself. Boundary throw in at the 50-metre line. Carlton's forward uh, pocket, forward flank. It's Reese Jones trying to get there. Finally gets boot to uh, Glascott. Johnston sidesteps. Mew. Here's a chance for Melbourne or Blackwell. And it's rushed through for one point. Or is it out of bounds? Might be out of bounds. It is, and so a throw in. Left forward pocket for Carlton as we approach the 16-minute mark of the third quarter. Robert Gauls and the Carlton Brains Trust. Well, tuck fumbles. Evans. Feed again. 21 possessions to read. Pete. Looks for Dippy and Domenico out there with Alvin. Alvin beats him for it. Now Dippy's into his back. It's just about out of bounds. Again, Dippy and Domenico applying the pressure. It's a boundary throw in, applauded by Russell Green. The average of Hawthorne is number nine play. They've had a great deal, those two, just the same, Bob. Right? Alvin's done a good job, too, Lee. They've both been fine players. Yes, Tommy Alvin's done well. So it's always English. The Cub, Madden, wins this one hard. It's the front runner. Green, just about has him. Picked up by Langford at the 50-metre defence line for Hawthorne. Langford around the boundary, looking for Dippy Domenico, and he's almost got the mark. Alvin caught by Flatten. Runs into Platten. Out of bounds. So he's still on the centre wing and a boundary throw it again to Fogger. Hawthorne just won't let up. They go right after all the time, Pete. Deer with Madden. Madden to Haas. Will knock back to Schwab. Has his kick partly smothered. It's into the centre field, centre field area. Knocked down by Ayers. He might be able to pick it up himself. Good tap on. Under Russo. Hoop the ball quickly. It's a play on four. Won't be a mark because it was touched. Good umpiring. Current over to Ears. Ears goes long. Dorotic in front. Brereton can't get clear. Well played, Dorotic. Out comes Dunstall with a snapshot. Might be through. It's a goal. Hey, Joe. Brian needs a hand. OK. I'm <laughs> sure hope the owner's with SAO. Oh, car insurance is all the same. SIO's different. The woman there explained why agreed value is better. Most companies only pay out market value. That's often much less. SIO make it so simple even you could understand it. Hey. Victorian from Victoria, so many S I O. They're okay. Jason Dunstall's fifth goal. Hawthorne leading 80 to 36 in the 1986 VFL Rand final. Desperate now, harms on the ball. Madden knocks it down, picked up by Russo. Wild hand pass over the head of the umpire. Racing forward is Schwab to get it away from Melvin. Harms on the ball, as Bob mentioned. Long up towards full forward, looking for Hunter, but it's out of bounds. And we'll check on the boundary umpire. It's on the floor, Hawthorne free kick. Well, this fellow's had a bad day today because Mew's had him well covered to Hunter. As they go now, with the ball driven up there towards the forward pocket. Going out 
was McKenzie and Petty have double a good hand pass to Blackwell has a running shot at goal. But it's up target that's through for another point, so they can't score a goal. They haven't scored one for the quarter. Four goals, 13, 37 goal. The Hawthorne, 12 goals, 880. And by golly, they're looking good, Bob Hawthorne, aren't they? Their tackling has been superb here today, and they're backing up and they've put the Carlton Stars out of business. The real finals football. This goes to show you go about your merry way. Can't play the boards for their play, but Hawthorne still battling away. And uh, you see them from take a mark from about 45 metres out. Boy, do they need a goal. Get two already, Meldrum. Well, they're not out of a jet, but uh, their chances are gradually fading, Peter. We wait now for Melbourne from about 45 metres out. And that might be all right. It's a goal. That's the first for the quarter for Carlton. That's Melbourne's uh, third goal. So it's Hawthorne, 12 goals, 8.80 to Carlton, 5 goals, 13, 8 to 43. Still a difference of, what, uh, 37 points. When we play, we see Melbourne having no trouble there. And now an excellent kick from by Melbourne. And each time that Carlton have needed a goal, it's been Melbourne who's put the one on the board. Uh, Johnson limping around there, and his opponent Swab has done an excellent job too. He's had him covered pretty well. The Gibby off the ground pretty quick as the ball knocked on by Matt over the half. Let's hope he can do a bit of difference that's going on the ball. A hurried kick by Deer out towards Glasgow. Grab the mark. Had a big chance for Carlton to go deep into attack. He's gone wide looking for Blackwell. He, oh, he couldn't hold that pressure from uh, Wallace, but he's clear. Looking for a pass to Alvin. Tips in all harm. has got one on the top of the head. The umpire didn't worry about that. Now he'll pay a free kick. And listen to the crowd go mad when Hawthorne get this one. Looking like a fair cop. I thought he got uh, Harms. Uh, well, that was in the back. No doubt about that. Yes. As you called it, Lou, I, I thought it was a free kick. Yeah. Though, Harms. It looked fairly obvious from, from our vantage point. Oh, he's right at the head. It did look like it. Ball back out there towards the wing position. They all missed that, and the ball is out of bounds on the centre wing. Let's go down to Peter Donigan now, a man on the ground to report on uh, Craig Bradley. Yes, Louis. Well, Craig was sitting on the bench for a while. They've taken him into the rooms. When he came off, his right hand was bandaged and very swollen, and obviously they're taking a look at that. Gary is taking an excellent mark, and uh, he's made the big difference against the uh, Reese Jones this game. Yes, at centre field. Hunter and uh, Mew having the behind play. Dunstall and Duell. Now three Hawthorne players are there and a couple should do the shepherding for Russo. Russo's gone high. Who have Hawthorne got there? Curran. Couldn't take it. English. Quite hard all day. He's been, I think he's just about been their best player with uh, Tommy Alden. And of course Madden's done excellent work on the ruck. Dippy to Medico to Platten. You'll have to kick this quickly. From the boundary line. Reese Jones. Well played. It hits it straight to Current, who gets dispossessed very quickly. Meldrum, good tackle on him by Dunstall. Ball booted up to uh, Ears, and Ears takes the mark at half forward, decides to play on from the 50 metre line. He gets yes. flattened. It might be a goal, or he'll get another kick. I think he's goal. Goal umpire checking with the field umpire. And it is a goal. In today's high tech world, tyre fitting is more than just a job. Bob Jane T-Marts, it's a highly skilled trade. That's why Bob Jane T-Marts develop young Australians like Chris Wilde through their own training scheme. It's important to you as a customer and our success as a company to always offer the best. The best personnel, the best choice of brands at the lowest prices, and above all, the best service. And the best service is what we give you at Bob Jane T-Marts. Gary Ears first goal, back into the centre. Hawthorne leading now, 86 to 43, so a difference of 43 points as Reese Jones tries to crash through. Umpire Peter Cameron has decided it will be a bounce and comes into talk for a couple of players. Tommy Alvin, Dipper, the name just... Uh, well, Dick is uh, deep here, the go limping pretty badly there too, Peter, at the centre of the ground. He is, but Wayne Johnston was a short time ago. So, a few sore players. Well, Hawthorne still have a news they're interchanged. That's Morris and Kennedy. They're on the boundary line at the moment. Glasgow wins it, but hit it straight to Abbott. Abbott's kick is up towards half four. Dolditch and Brereton. Buck and has been a little bit quieter this quarter. And Carlton get clear through uh, Robertson. Now towards their left half forward. Flank Schwab fumbles out of bounds. Out of bounds about eight metres around from the Carlton goal. They've only kicked one for the quarter. That must be seen as though it's about 48 miles away from that, their goal. Running out for 
the umpire to bring the ball back into play. Knocked out that time by Lankford coming over the top of the back of the pack. Flat kicks it off the ground as a chance now uh, for Reed, but it beats him. He's been a fine player today. Notice that Ayers went down behind play there too. Well, he just pushed Luke. He flew a warming up to come back on. Bradley coming out from in the room, Pete. But he now put the ball back into play. The ruck one got control. That English gets a hurried kick, but intercepted by Ayers. And what a game that fellow's played today as it goes out there with D.P. and Amenigo. Doherty, the D.P. and Amenigo grabbed him. Going after this now is Alvin on the boundary line. He's gone. He put it out of bounds before he punched it. And the umpire will throw it in. Johnson going off the ground, limping pretty badly. And D.P. and Amenigo coming off the ground too. He doesn't want to. No, he won't come off. He's still on there. Loveridge. Got the ball now. Hawthorne, the more desperate side up towards Dunstall. Touched away by Dill. Bacanara comes in, taps it over now to Russo. A running shot at goal, and that's good. Well, they're really killing it now. The Hawks in the league looking good, and are they happy? So they should be. What a goal they did. Now 92 to Hawthorne. The Carlton looking pretty sick. Five goals, 13 43. Morris coming. Excessive in a time of change. A time that would see Australia divided and families and friendships destroyed over a war in a place called Vietnam. Coming soon, an epic love story passionately told against the march of great events. Sword of Honor on Seven. And, and they're looking good again, as we said before. 14 8 92 Hawthorne to Carlton. Five goals, 13 43. The center bounce again. And Carlton have only scored one goal for the quarter. Swab off, swab off Kennedy on. Swab off the ground, and uh, that shows a sign of confidence. They're moving him, moving him around a bit now, Hawthorne, as Wallace goes after it. Did he get one in the back from Blackwell? The umpire said no. They've been very consistent today, the umpires. You couldn't go about that. It's Blackwell out there on the centre wing position, going for a pass, looking for Kernham, but he's been swamped today. Well played by him as he knocks the ball back out there to Langford. But that kick is marked out there by Carlton's Glasgow. Uh, Dean, Dean, I should say. Dean from centre wing, up the half forward. Mark taken by Madden. Beautiful hand pass to Hunter. Hunter has to get clear. He's flattened into the goal square. And Kennedy comes out to see the ball safely over the line. 26 and a half minutes got in the third quarter. Looking at pretty uh, plain six, I'm sorry. Has, uh, uh, a rather large ice pack. And Dipper looks as though he's gone four rounds with Joe Frazier. Hunter tries to crash through. Chance for Kernahan. Hunter again, tackled by Tuck. Abbott around McClure, not quite. And again, smothered by Kernahan. Rhys Jones gets the hand pass out. Langford, McKenzie, Glasgow, smothered again. E, hit by Evans. And it's going to be a bounce, yes, in Carlton's full forward position. And once again, the smothering, smothered off the boot, and there's. And DP Domenico looks like a crook ankle with the ice pack on the ankle. So bounce. And the 20 yards or 20 metres from the Carlton goal. Knocked down to Evans, a snapshot of goal. It's through. That's what they needed. The Carlton still fighting. And the Blues bring up their sixth goal. 6 13 39 to 14 8 92. That's a, a nice piece of rabbing by Bernie Evans, but uh, we haven't seen a great deal of Evans today. But on replay now, uh, we see from the bounce, Kernahan gets the tap down. Evans reading it beautifully and a very nice snap from a different angle. From behind the goals, and still the same score. 28 minutes have got 43 points in favour of Hawthorne. Madden and Deer, one by Madden, picked up by Harms, but the ball was knocked out of his hands pretty quickly. Curran and Russo combined well for Hawthorne. Russo's kick up to Bacanara, has he got the mark? No. Dunstall grabbed by Motley. Bacanara, and all thrown out to Flatten. Flatten has a right foot snapshot. Underneath it is Brereton. Good play by Dorothy. Brereton recovers to Quicker and goes! Well, I thought it was out of bounds. I thought Dorothy had done a good job. Brereton's third, 15-8, 98 to 6 13, 49. But Dorothy stopped Brereton flat, and that's the out of being a star footballer, Bob. I think that's the difference. You know, who have uh, summed it up as Bacanara takes it. Um, Bacanara with a nice little hand pass out to Flatten. Flatten then snaps towards goal, and we'll watch 
Doris does a good job to punch it away, but then he did stop. Probably not so much stop, but didn't know where the ball was. From a different angle. The snap, back in the centre. And a bounce again. Deer grabbed that one. He's showing a bit more confidence now. Over to Glasgow out there at half back. Grunin's after him. He gets away from him. Drives the ball out wide. Looking for the hunter and found him. The kicks have been scarce for Kenny out of the West Australian champ. He's only had about five possessions so far. Kerner and Matt couldn't hold that. Mackenzie's grabbed three hawks there. Backing up well together. Have it over to Langford. Langford out wide looking for Brunin. He's attacked that time by Dodd. But still gets a hand pass back. Coming in to meet it as Dean. He's got it. Back it goes to Kennedy. Scoops around Dorovich. A hand pass coming over now to Brown. He just got back from over the fence. <laughs> he got over the fence. I think he likes doing a bit of show business stuff. Out to English. Well, it's uh, driven up there by Carlton again over there at a half uh, forward line. It comes out but now again. Drives the ball back towards uh, Brown. Tapped it on. Should have marked that. Robertson missed it completely. Tapped on by Ayers over the green. A running shot at goal. He's up target and through for one point. But they're doing all the attacking and they're certainly the most aggressive side. There's Brown going over the fence. I think he helped himself over there. He wanted to do a bit of acting, I would say. Good. Picked up by Dean and a bit of trouble trying to get clear. Finally does goes for a short pass looking for Melbourne, but Tuck's got him pretty well covered. Goes for a tap up, but it beats him in the ball. Free kick, holding the man. Melbourne doesn't realise it. No, Melbourne didn't think it was a free kick, but he's got one. And there's the sound around the third quarter. And Hawthorne in a very good position for this 1986 grand final. 15 9, 99 Hawthorne to Carlton, six goals, 13 49. Well, Hawthorne got those first two goals within about uh, two, minutes. two minutes of the start of the uh, third quarter. And of course, we've had over 101,000 today which is a great crowd to see Hawthorne really put Carlton out of business but the most impressive part about Hawthorne today was the, that was the team effort plus the aggressiveness of the side and their tactic they've really put Carlton on, on balance the Carlton superstars their imports have hardly been cited with um, Bradley's been missing and uh, he's not the only one Pete no no he certainly isn't they have been down very much down on their performance in the second semi we'll take a break 99 to 49 Every one of these integrated circuits is NEC technology. Technology that is keeping you in front. Aussie Utes and Aussie Vans. Compare the Utes and Vans you've known and I'm sure you'll all agree. Ford Falcon stands alone for reasons plain to see. A man, he needs his company and a little bit of style. He needs Ford Falcon Utes and Vans, best by a country mile. Hard riding little buzz boxes just don't appeal, don't suit. Give me six cylinder performance and economy to boot. Ford Falcon Utes and Vans, cause they stand alone. Coming soon to the Entertainment Centre 7, there's riotous fun with Porky's Revenge. What's going on? Then the con's on again, Sting 2. 
I got an idea. Australia's own The Cool and Gotta Go. You gotta win? Yes, yes! yes! A fantastic tale about a fantastic tale. Splash. She's a fish. Nobody said love's perfect. Tom Cruise is losing it at the epic Australian miniseries Sword of Honor. Bill, get back! Spectacular entertainment coming soon to seven. The biggest sporting stadium in Australia today holding 101,861 fans for the 1986 VFL Grand Final. And they've seen Hawthorne play three quarters of excellent football, one quarter to go to decide the flag and the Premiership Cup for the season. In that quarter, Hawthorne added seven goals to the Carlton's two goals to. But I'm sure that Hawthorne remember what Essendon did to them in 1984 when Hawthorne led by four goals at the start of the final quarter and then lost the match. For Hawthorne, the major goal kickers have been Bacchanara 4, Dunstall 5 and Brereton 3. For Carlton, Meldrum has kicked three goals and singles to Evans, Rhys Jones and Glasgow. The 1986 Victorian Football League Premiership season is proudly sponsored by Carlton, brewers of Foster's Lager. And welcome back to the MCG. Bob Skilton, your thoughts on the third quarter? Well, I think not just the third quarter, but the uh, whole game so far. Uh, the moves that Hawthorne have made with the select selection of players to pick up the danger players in the Carlton side. Uh, and Wayne Johnston uh, cut them to pieces in the second semi. Uh, Peter Swap has done a magnificent job against him today. Uh, Kenny Hunter, always dangerous, but he's been held in close check by Chris Mew. Stephen Kernahan at, at centre-half forward in the first half was well held there uh, by Chris Langford. And in the third quarter, Langford and Abbott swap. Abbott has already done a great job against McClure. They swap. Abbott continued and uh, played a tremendous game in the third term against Kernahan. And uh, then when we look at Rhys Jones, who was the best man on the ground on the wing in the second semi-final. He's been put out of business by Gary Ayres. And the same applies to Craig Bradley. And on his opponent has been Rodney E. And he has done the damage. Uh, Michael Tuck has been on Melbourne. Give Melbourne the edge there. But whereas the Carlton defence was right on top in the second semi-final. This time we see Gary Bacchanara with four goals. Jason Dunstall, five goals against Bruce Duell. Dermot Brereton, three goals from centre-half forward. And those key forwards, uh, they've done exactly the job that one would expect to be done. Looking at the stats, 36 more kicks to Hawthorne. Five more marks, three kicks, one in favour of Carlton. Handball, barely even one in favour of Carlton. Hit out, still well in favour of Justin Madden. But Greg Dears and game really improved in that quarter. Uh, shots at goal, 20 to 24. Bob Skilton and OTC carrying the game known to the world by satellite. Start of the final quarter of the 1986 BFL Grand Final from the MCG. Hawthorne leading by 50 points. But of course in the 84 Grand Final they were overrun by Essendon in the final quarter. Wallace up to half forward. Two Hawthorne players collide. Buckingham and Brewer has left for Doritich who gives Kennedy one against, three against, against Doritich. And that was pretty foolish play because Carlton had the run of the ball and John Kennedy will get his first kick. That's not really what you call football toughness. It certainly isn't. I'll tell you what, but it's a nice feeling to go to the uh, last quarter, 50 points in front. It's a handy lead. A dragon. Kennedy, who's missed a month through injury. Not a long kick. Tries to find Dunstall off his hands. And neither he nor Bacchanara can get there before the ball beats both of them over the boundary line. Peter Donegan on the boundary line has some news on injuries, and there have been a few of them, Pete. Yes, there certainly have to both teams. Peter Wayne Johnston has what looks like a very bad cork thigh, and there's no chance of him coming back on, I wouldn't say. He can hardly walk. Bertie Dippy and Domenico got a kick on the ankle. They've iced it. He's had two stitches in his eye, but if they need him, they'll need a Sherman tank to stop him from coming back onto the ground. Great mark to Wallace in front of Blackwell. Wallace a short pass to centre wing, and the mark is taken by Abbott. A deer. And the big guy's over. Gets it back to Ayres and turn to Loveridge. And it's out of bounds. The walking wounded. Swab well, and DP Domenico having a chat. Madden and Deer. Madden again gets the tap out, but not a decisive one. Reese Jones, short kick, McKenzie marks, has to play on. McKenzie up towards McClure. Langford at the back. Hunter out of bounds in Carlton's left forward pocket. One and three quarter minutes into the final term. Blues need some goals quickly. 39 is Abbott, four is Kernahan. On to Hunter. Hunter's left foot snapshot is going pretty close. Russo gets backup support from Rodney Eade. 
and the Hawks are able to run the ball out of the fence. And Rodney each played a superb game here today. Goes for a short pass. It's okay, and it's marked by Russell Green, Green, the Hawthorne vice captain. Taking some good form today too. Able to tuck. And they're doing as they like now as Abbott picks that the hand pass from uh, Tuck. Madden's got the mark. Well, he's batted pretty hard, Rob. Uh, he has. Knocked the ball out, but uh, not always to a man, but still he's in there trying. The kick by Motley is out wide, and it's out of bounds on the floor. That'll be a penalty free kick going out there to Ayers. In my opinion, just about the best player on the ground. Short pass. Bacanara has got it. And what a game he's played out there at half forward, too. Kicked what? How many goals up to this stage? Four goals up to this stage of the match. A little bit hesitant at that time. Decides to go for the long kick into the goal square. Brett at the back, punched out by Dool, and through for one point. Of course, Bruce Dool playing his last man match today. He's had his hands full with uh, with Dunstall, with Dunstall because Dunstall's kicked five goals up to this stage of the game. Bob, yes, he certainly has, uh, Luke. Waiting now for uh, Dool to bring the ball back into play over the 50-meter defence line. Punched out by Deer. Back it goes there to uh, Green. Picked up by uh, Reese Jones. Grabbed by Platt. Couldn't get clear. That's Matt to get him out of the trouble there to drive the ball back there towards Hunter. But he's not having much luck today. Muse had him well covered and cleared beautifully back towards that half forward line. But that's Robertson grabbed again. That's been Hawthorne. The tackling been superb. And finally it comes out wide to Tommy Alvin. And Alvin's got it on the centre wing position. We're approaching the four minute mark. There's a hand pass to Glasgow back to Alvin again. He has to get a hurried kick down there towards the forward pocket. McClure comes out, but Langford's well on top of him here. Back to Kernahan, who's had a dirty day today. He can't get clear. They smothered him. First of all, he had uh, Langford on him. Then in that third quarter, they put uh, Abbott and put him out of business too. Uh, Kernahan's had six possessions up to this stage of the match. Not good enough for a centre half forty. That one out to Blackwell, a hurried kick for goal, but it's off target now to bounce on the form. That'll be a penalty free kick to go down there to Tuck in the back pocket position. So four and a half minutes gone just about of this last quarter of the 1986 grand final. It's Hawthorne 15, 10, 100 to count. Six goals, 13, 49. Michael Tuck, Hawthorne captain, is going to bring the ball back into play. Kicks over Motley. Here's and Reese Jones chipping in as Chris Mew. Quite a fine game, this fellow too. Clint keeping Hunter uh, quiet like he has, Bob. Certainly has. Mew, or wobbly punt kick. Just over the head of Platten. And the mark is taken by Alvin. Alvin up towards centre field. Hunter got one in the back. He'd effectively stopped him. We'll get a 15 metre penalty. It's been brought back on the mark. Hunter plays on. McClure at the back is Mew though again. On to Tuck who fumbles. Makes amends looking for Platten. Platten on the wing position. Ball just a little bit too wide for him. And the throw-in will take place in front of the MCC members stand. Matt taps it down. Picked up by Dean. Uh, by uh, Motley. McClure has it knocked away by Langford. Langford follows up. Good hip and shoulder. Ball paddled further forward. Chance for McClure again. Plenty of fumbling going on at the moment. Finally socket away by Russo. Out to Wallace. Breaks the tackle from English, but only just onto Langford at left centre wing. Langford's kick is up to half forward, and the mark is taken by Green. As I said, back into some of his best form today, Russell Green. Green. The lead is from Kennedy, and Kennedy marks at half forward. Thought about going on, but the Bernie Evans made sure he didn't. It won't be a 15-metre penalty. Kennedy was, look, was acting for the 15-metre yeah. penalty. And umpire um, Russo right on the job. So John Kennedy. That's probably his second kick of the day. His father's here today. I wonder who he's for. I should imagine to be Hawthorne, uh, Peter. I think he'd be uh, supporting that mob. <laughs> Kennedy from about 45 metres out. He's off target and through for one point. Yes. So the scoreboard. 15-11. 101 to 6-13-49. Only good the ball to come back into play. A short one. It's OK. It's marked by Motley. Round about the 50 metre defence line. Goes for a pass. Mew's got to Hunter coming again. The umpire set play on. Hunter appealing for a free kick. Deer goes for a hand pass to Abbott. He got one pretty high. Too high. 
And the umpire call play on paying the advantage. Will as Mew drives it right down towards Dunstall. They all fly. It hits the deck. Backing up well as English there at full back. Goes wide. It'll be okay and marked by Robertson. Showing a bit of pace. He better bounce it. Getting away from here. But he'd be pretty tight. He's had a million touches out there today. Now it goes there towards Tuck. Good play by Tuck. And it's Russo sending Hawthorne back into attack. The money flat. Cuts down by English. But flat won't give up. He goes after it again. And the little rover from South Australia was grabbed. Oh, no, yes, he was grabbed, but he didn't have the ball. I thought so. And the umpire will play a free kick. There's Alan Jeans. He'd be a pretty happy coach now. I'm pretty sure he knows he's got this game in the bag. When we play now, we see just why John Clayton got that free kick. Difference 52 points in favour of Hawthorne. Off the top of the pack again as a go for that's little kick goal number six. Dill right on his back, and the ball is finally forced out of bounds. It's out of bounds, 49 plays, 101 in favour of Hawthorne. Grant and Dill having a bit of a mix up, but there's no way in the world that uh, Dill will get reported in his last game. All back into play again. Knocked out by Matt, picked up by Kennedy, a snap and goal, a chance for Dunstall again, coming out after it, it beats him and goes out of bounds. So it's out of bounds in the foot pocket position, about 30 metres around from the Hawthorne goal. And we're just over the eight and a half minute mark of this last quarter. Money for the throw in again. Matt and Deer. Platten trying to get out of the pack. He's grabbed by two of them there, Motley and uh, English, and the umpire said he had no. They threw him out of the pack like he was a, a little flea, flea or a fly, and uh, the umpire will ball it up about uh, 15 metres out uh, from the uh, Hawthorne goal again. Matt not his own. With a hand pass to Dean. Alvin, well caught, not a long kick. Loveridge, snapshot, marked by two, uh, right in the last line of defence. The Dean. Look for English or Reese Jones. Reese Jones. Up the centre wing. Good mark for Robertson. Now Carlton showing a bit of system. Blackwood on his own in front of Wallace. Looks for Hunter. He marks or does he? Yes, he has played it. Umpire Peter Cameron. It's a play on call now. Evans has it knocked away from him. Chris Mew can't handle it. Looking for a free kick was Bernie Evans. Might be one there, is there? No. Boundary throw in to follow. In Carlton's left forward pocket. We've been playing nearly 10 minutes into the last quarter. Kernahan at Abbott. It's a wrestle. Blackwell grabbed. Did he have it? And by Peter Cameron says holding the ball. Oh, that's murder. I'll say it is. I thought your call was right. I think it was a free kick to Blackwell. Mew takes the free kick for Hawthorne. Looking for Platten. He gets overrun purely by weight of numbers and also by Wayne Harms. Good tackle by Russell Green. Bacanara just about uh, gets him. But a good mark taken. Kenzie, is it? 15 metre penalty, Pete. That'll bring him well within kicking distance. He's only about 30 metres out and directly in front of goal. He's still on the bench for Carlton. Had a chance to bring up a badly needed goal for the Blues. He has done. The TV in your day should be a national. Oh, on route. Yeah, on route. And stations around Australia. Housing. World News. For the team, George Denethia. Good night. <laughs> Television for tomorrow as well as today. You can get them now from National. From National. Craig Bradley on the boundary line, and as it looks as though like Bernie Evans is coming off the ground. 55 to 101. That was McKenzie's first goal for Carlton. Hawthorne haven't scored a goal in the final quarter so far. Motley. Ears. Ears at centre field. Ears goes out towards right half forward flank. No Hawthorne player within Kiwi. Now finally Dunster on the scene. Duel just about caught with the ball. Now it's left to current. 
can on the boundary. Snapshot is off target though, and Dorothy Johnny Zone takes the easiest of marks. He'll get all done. Dolich goes for a hand pass, dangerous over to Wendy's back to Dorothy's again in the back pocket, out wide towards that half back line. And the ball finally passed out of bounds by Kennedy, but at least he's kept it uh, about 60 metres, 70 metres out from the Hawthorne goal. They're trailing by 41 points. 55 plays, 101. Like it comes to Reese Jones, he can't pick it up. Kennedy applying plenty of pressure as we see. Uh, free, free kick Jones. downfield. Free kick uh, downfield against uh, Russell Kennedy. Green. Yeah, Russell Green, I should say. He's not too happy about it. No, it's going to come back. It's going to come back. Before, yeah. It must have been before he kicked it in the opinion of the outfire. So we wait now for uh, Reese Jones out there at half back. Boots the ball out towards the wing position. And there'll be a mark to uh, Kernahan, and they've been pretty scarce for this guy today. It's his third mark for the match. Punched away again. Bucket comes tapped on by Loveridge. Morris getting clear there on that half-back line. Boots the ball towards centre-half forward. Alvin at the back. Buccanara misses it as well. Coming in to meet it now is Robertson, but Green's one on his tail. Robertson goes down. Good play by Robertson as he gets it out to Dorothy. It's out to Reese Jones on his own on the half-back line. Uh, too happy with Reese Jones. I don't think he's done too much wrong today. Coming in is Bradley. Been off the ground for about half the match, but at least got him covered like he did in that first half. It'll be hard. Oh, 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 oh. What do you think about that, Bob? Oh. It's a 15-meter penalty. This gives Bradley a chance to send them deep into attack, and over it goes now to Meldrum. He's in well tackled by Duck. That was a magnificent tackle by the Hawthorne vice captain. Back it comes to Glasgow. Glasgow gets to his feet, boots the ball up there towards the full board position. Tapped on by Kerner and over to McClure. McClure is clear. Clear gets a hurried kick down there towards the full board position. Blackwell goes in. Wallace has got him covered over the top of him. And the umpire said, hold the ball again. I couldn't wait for that because he had no hope in the world of getting rid of that. One all. One all. Well, that's well look at Blackwell going mad about it. So he showed what chance did Blackwell have. Look through the rivers. Lumbridge down there in the back pocket. Langford, Langford at the 50 metre defence line, goes for a short pass, not a good one, and Robertson, actually Robertson hasn't played that badly since he came on the ground, Bob, and no, he's done okay, Luke. he did so well the last time on Wallace, I was wondering why they didn't put him on there at the beginning of the match, but the ball is out of bounds in the forward pocket for Carlton, I think the choice there came between Blackwell and Robertson, and they went for Blackwell, on the ball, that... what chance did Blackwell have of getting rid of that, ball back into play again, up well as Mew drives the ball back, but uh, there we see Big Matt on the way to take the mark about 65 70 meters out. A quick hand pass over to Bradley. That's a hurried kick, doesn't cover much distance. Punched out by Mew again. A flat but quick hand pass to Ayers. And look at Ayers go, he's got a panic to run. And nearly lost that, but he recovered okay. But a Carlton to play within a mile. A long hand pass to Russell Green. This could be dangerous. A long shot. Well, he's off target. Quite a few there, 7, 13, 55, Carlton, the Hawthorne, 15, 12, 102, a difference of 47 points. And we're just on the 15 and a half minute mark of this last quarter, the 1986 Grand Final. Without under touching it. it. He touched it, Pete. Just. Would have been a free kick to Hawthorne otherwise. Hawthorne yet to score a goal in this final quarter. They've only scored three points. Madden. Motley. Motley on the 50 metre defence line for Carlton. Back to centre wing, big pack of players there. And he, Morris, has played the mark for Morris, yes. A few hands on that one. Morris, though, at centre wing, started on the bench for Hawthorne. Madden can't take it, Dean can, looks for the hand pass, Motley, on to Alvin. Alvin from left half-back flank, Meldrum and Tuck. We've had a good deal all day. Tuck, clever enough to get the ball over the boundary line. It will be a throw-in at left half forward flank for Carlton. Six feet and a half minutes gone. Well, time gradually uh, running out for Carlton, Pete, if they've got any chance at all. Yes, probably about 15 minutes left for play. McKenzie goes the big thump and hits it straight to Chris Mew, who was upset. Motley. Hunter. Hunter at the 50-metre line. Kennedy in pursuit. Could just about be a goal. Off target, bounced through for a point. Now it's out of bounds. Boundary throw it. Right forward pocket now for Carlton. Alan Jeans, Norm Goss, 
and the statistics. People from the Hawks looking a little worried, but they shouldn't at the moment, although Carlton doing better in the last quarter. Kernahan tries to get clear. I think we'll see a bounce here, which will take place right on the edge of the kickoff line. In Carlton's attacking zone, of course. By John Russo. Puts it down. McClure, high. Kennedy looks for the hand pass onto Wallace, who has to go around the boundary line, and it's out of bounds, only just. It rebounded off Peter Russo anyway, but it will be a throw in. Throw in at the 50 metre line. Carlton at attack. Knocked over the back to Morris. Mackenzie and uh, Loveridge. Loveridge suckers it away from him. Up towards the edge of the square, and once again, we will see a bounce. 18 minutes gone in the quarter. 18 minutes gone in this last quarter. And to Hawthorne, the one up, two points to Carlton, 55. Down towards Carlton, centre half forward position. Knocked on by Matt. He's done that pretty well today. Robertson coming in. Oh, there's Ayers. Played a great game, but he's had plenty of uh, mates out there today for Hawthorne. It's been a real team effort. Chance for uh, Huddle to get clear. They grab it. That's their form today over the Blackwell from 45 metres out. A running shot at goal. It's not Carlton's day today. This last Saturday in September, it's through for another point. 7 14, 56 Carlton to Hawthorne, 15 12, 102. Even though Hawthorne haven't scored uh, goals this quarter, but they're still uh, containing Carlton and putting plenty of pressure on them. Yes, I Carlton are not doing enough to look as though they can bridge the gap. As Dean almost looked good enough. Going after it now is English. He actually threw that over to Dean, but the umpire gave him plenty of uh, leniency there, but it's out of bounds. Crowd are feeling for a deliberate throw out, but the crowd not having a part of having a bar of it. It'll be a throw in from the centre wing position on the members' side of the ground. Well, both Ruckman missed that. The Motley's kick is smothered by Abbott. Still another scramble there, and the umpire will ball it up once again. Hawthorne have been superb today. This is a typical Hawthorne uh, battle here today. A side that we're very proud to watch. There's Huntley with a with a blood nose. There's been plenty of those today. It's been a tough game, but Hawthorne showing uh, that they're much the stronger side. As we see Arnold Holmes get it over to Kernahan. Back it goes to Glasgow. Looking for Hunt. He's got a chance to mark this one. He does. Gets away from you. And he's found that very difficult today. He's about 50 metres out from goal. There's the kick. McClure at the back, Kernahan's there too, and he's grabbed the mark. And he's well within kicking distance. But right on the 20-minute mark of this last quarter, he's yet to score a goal. And the difference, 46 points. It would have to be a miracle for Carlton to win it, but we've seen funny, funny things happen in football, Bob, haven't we? I don't think so, in this position. No, I don't think so, but still. Bradley coming off again. Bradley's had a bad day, and this fellow hasn't been too high either. Kernahan. There's the kick, and that's uh, his first goal for the match and count we asked these people what they'd say to a mayonnaise containing 70% oil. <gasps> what? 70%? Never. Uh... However, Kraft natural polyunsaturated mayonnaise with less than half the oil content of praise left them lost for words. Much less oil. Kraft all natural polyunsaturated mayonnaise. Less oil, more mmm. 62 plays, 102. 40, uh, 40 points the difference. Wallace couldn't get that out from Motley Funders, and once again, the up player will ball it up at centre field. Sure, all have to score a goal in the final quarter. They've added only three behinds. Carlton have kicked two goals, one. But the third quarter was the one that did the damage for Hawthorne. This is knocked away by Madden to Russo. Russo to left half forward flank. Out comes Platten. English right there with him. He's got it under Rodney Eade. Can Hawthorne score one in the final quarter? Dunstall leads out, gets the hand pass on the Wallace. This might be the one that they needed. Wallace's shot is going through for a point if the goal umpire's feet. So four points they've added in the final quarter. A difference of 41 points. Dorotich looks for Evans. Motley Crabb, when not in position, will take the free kick for Carlton. 
for Evans in his run. Bernie Evans at the 50 metre defence line looks for Hunter at the back is Kernahan. Kennedy loses that one out. Hunter picks it up for Carlton. And Carlton certainly still playing with a lot of endeavour and fighting it right out. Robertson. They certainly haven't given up the ghost. Meldrum, great juggling mark. And here's another one. He's only oh, about 35 metres out. And Meldrum's kicked three goals. So Carlton's certainly not going down without a fight. Maybe this ground is going to come alive after all. Knuckle tuck, misjudging that one. Completely, yes. I suppose with four goals, Meldrum's had the better of tuck today. Look at that kick. McKenzie. Well shepherded onto McClure, onto Evans. Evans can't get clear, now he can, but it's out of bounds on the floor. A shocker. And it will be a free kick to Hawthorne in the left back pocket to be taken by Richard Loveridge. With number 32 for Carlton, David Mascot standing on the mark. Not, uh, confetti type material you can see, I guess there's torn up phone books. And there's plenty of it at the moment, making conditions a little bit tricky. Morris at the back. Fast enough with the hand pass. Curran got ridden into the ground and he will take a free kick for an obvious push in the back. Curran, the left halfback flank for Hawthorne. has not been the real damaging player that we might have expected him to be. Kick one goal. Morris. And the 15 metre penalty for knocking the ball out of his hands. Doesn't wait for it. Gets it onto Russo. Russo's gone for a pass. The lead is by Platten. Dorotich is there with him. Brushes him aside pretty easily. Then slips over. Hurried hand pass to English, Platten's still going. Brewitt looking for a free kick, English down. Reese Jones, Harms, Harms from right half back flank, short pass. He chips in beautifully, looks for a free kick. That's He's it. got it and gets it. Played a great game, he certainly has, Bob. He was in the reserves grand final last year, Rodney Eid. So was Gary Bacanara. Can he score another one from 50 metres out? Off target, I think, or did it hit the post? One point again. Four goals, three back and out. 15 14, so they've scored five behinds in the final quarter of Hawthorne. And they still lead by 42 points. We're half a minute from time off. Money now for the ball to come back into play. Ball short, and there's a mark taken by Dean at centre half back. Gives it over to Wayne Harms. In plenty of trouble here, gets it back to Glaskett. Glaskett decides to go for a bit of a run. Send the ball long over the half forward line, but Langford's there to take a safe mark. Been a superb uh, defensive for uh, Hawthorne today, too, Bob. I'll tell you, this fellow's been a great player today, keep, keeping out of score, putting Hunter. All over the ground, Lou, the players have, have done the job that Alan Jeans has asked of them. Certainly have. It's been a team effort. The tackling's been marvellous. Intercepting that time was McClure, but things have been pretty uh, grim for him today. As we see Hunter coming into the game now, but it's all over by the shouting. Gernahan clashed that time with Mew, comes off uh, the better. But Deer backing up, plenty of Hawthorne players there. He taps it on again. Down goes Hunter. They soon collar him. He can't get out. Finally, it comes out now to Dean. They've fallen on top of him, and the umpires decided to ball it up out there on the centre wing position. 25 and a half minutes gone, just about. There's Robert Walls, and uh, no doubt uh, very disappointed with his side's performance today. Just on the 25 and a half minute mark of this last quarter, 15 14, 104 Hawthorne. For Carlton, eight goals, 14, 62. And the Hawks have got the grand final in the back. As we see, it picked up now by Russo. Out wide, coming into meter now is Curran. Darwin's chips in, but the ball is finally forced out of bounds. But it's down on Hawthorne's half four, but about 70 metres out from their goal. Over 101,000 people seen the 1986 grand final. That's done by England. Glasgow over there to Robertson. Robertson's kick is a short run. Punched away again there by Abbott. Over it goes to Hunter. Back to Kernahan. They're coming into the game too late. Kernahan going for a run. Having a running shot at goal. You upset there. The kick is on its way. We wait on the result. It's a goal to count. 26 and a half minutes to be gone. Nine goals, 14, 68 to count. The Hawthorne 15, 14, 104. And that's Kernahan's second goal. A real tempo that has gone out of the game, and uh, I'm sure Alan Jeans will have the runner out uh, trying to, to get his team to realise that you cannot to relax no matter how short the time might be that Carlton have got left. So, on replay now, we see Kernahan, a nice piece of shepherding by Wayne Blackwell. 68 to 104, back into the centre. 
time on being played. Again, Carlton get the ball away from the centre where Madden's been unbeatable. Virtually in the ruck all day. Tuck might have got one in the back. As Melbourne dives on top of him, but umpire John Russell has adjudicated and it will be a bounce. Set a half forward for Carlton. 36 points the difference. Beat just we approach the 27 and a half middle mark, but it's all over by the shouting. Beat for Hawthorne. Good pack of players. Knocked down to Russell, who's played an excellent game today. Brewer from Dorotic, they've had a great duel. Through goes Bacanara, offloaded by Dorotic. Brereton, can Hawthorne score that elusive goal in the final quarter? Out the Dunstan, he's kicked five, around Duel. Great tackle by Duel, but Dunstall brushes it aside. This might be the one that they needed. And finally, they break the ice in the last quarter. Six goals to Jason Dunstall, who's played a fine game. 16-14, 110 to 9, 14, 68. Well, there's ever such a thing as a nail in the coffin, but um, that right. certainly is it. As uh, Dermot Brereton puts the ball out in front of Dunstall and does well to get past Duel, steadies and puts it through. So his sixth goal, a great effort when you consider the fact that uh, well, Duel put it all over him in the second semi. Realising that the siren about to go, there's a mob of players and officials on the boundary line, but back to the centre, 68 to 110. Knocked down by Deere on this occasion. There's the siren. And Hawthorne are premiums in 1986. The Hawks winning their sixth VFL flag. Defeating Carlton. The scoreboard 16-14. 110 to 9-14. 68. Well, they're certainly a happy club at Hawthorne. It was a fine effort today. It was a team effort. And uh, it's a bit of sweet match today, Bob and Pete, because there's their coach, Alan James, a very elated man. Thanks, Louis. Alan James is with now. Alan, well done. Any anxious moments? Ron Cook uh, just making the congratulations. Alan, of course, will go over and join his players, and deservedly so. It was a real team effort last week, and even a better one today. Thank you, Alan. Well, Alan, I think, uh, wants to join in the celebrations, and we certainly don't blame him for that. We'll join some of the players in a moment, but let's go back in the meantime to Peter Lambert. Okay, thanks very much indeed, Peter, and the players grouping in the centre. North uh, in the last four grand finals, and Bruce Stewart playing his last game today, and being congratulated there by Jack Hamilton. And I think he's been congratulated by just about every single thing player too, Peter. Well, that's typical of the whole game football club, as I said before, Pete, a little bit of bitter and sweet, sweet for Hawthorne, but bitter for Bruce Stewart playing his last game, Bob. And it's a very sad occasion for football in general, because players like... Uh, Bruce Dillon, they come around in the lifetime, do they? Every now and again. Yes, there's a monument as far as this game is concerned, an ornament of football. And there's the man, the great Bruce Dill, finished with football. And the 59 games, Bob. A magnificent uh, performance over his career. And a shattering one today as uh, the whole team just couldn't put it together. But what a great performance by that club there. Hawthorne Football Club, uh, coach Alan Jeans being chaired by the team, and what a great team performance it was. Well, Jeans must go down as one of the great coaches because he coached Hawthorne uh, St Kilda their first premiership in 1966, and uh, how long has he been at Hawthorne? This is his second premiership, and he's one of the guys that coaches a football team that's respected not only by his own players, but uh, players and officials and coaches of other teams. He's a great man for football, and the reason why he's such a successful coach, Bob, too, besides his knowledge of the game, is because he loves football so much. And um, Michael Tapp, another great man of football, too. Let's go down once again to Peter Donegan. He might be getting wet with champagne. Yes, uh, we will be any tick of the clock now. Paul Abbott's here and is uh, enjoying a celebration. I don't think he wants to talk. I think he just wants to join in. We've got uh, Chris Langford here with us. Chris, congratulations. That must be a real load off him. Oh, it's, it's stuff that my dreams are made of. It's a great moment. Especially after the last two years, the disappointments too, and the disappointment of two weeks ago. Certainly, uh, two weeks ago was, you know, give me a bit of wake, waking up, and two, the last two years we've got a bit of pride back to the club. It's great. Chris, walk with us over because the celebrations are going to start, but uh, it really just does go to show what a great club Hawthorne is because they always pull together. They've done it today. Yeah, well, it's great to fight back and... Uh, you know, show that we are a club. We've been here four years and two out of four is not bad. Well, Chris, you've waited about three years for this feeling. Go and enjoy it. Thank you. Chris Langford, more shortly. Back to play.
Right, thanks very much indeed, Pete. Will the official presentations to begin in just a few moments? Each fourth on play will be presented with the medal. The Premiership Cup will be brought out, and we'll be back for that after this message. This 38 pound snapper was hooked by a Mr. Joe Connor of Bermagui. God's wallop! I was hooked by his Jarvis Walker rod. Come to a very special part of the world. It's never crowded, it's never hurried. It's always beautiful. Dunk Island, Australia. Everything's high technology. Doesn't matter what aircraft it is. Our job's to keep them flying. performance unleaded petrol break free new shell ultra high the first high octane high performance unleaded petrol Kyneton Victoria 1945 two baby girls born at the same time they've given you the wrong baby so began the most notorious emotionally explosive custody battle in Australia's history he does have blue eyes yours are brown I think we've got the wrong babies a bizarre chain of events that shocked the world as it shattered the lives of the two families involved there has been a mix up Nola is ours Angela Punch McGregor is Gwen Morrison we'll get justice Mr. Calperley Drew Forsythe is Bill Morrison you could not possibly be the father of Mr. Morrison Vicky Luke is Jess Jenkins I know I have my own baby Peter Curtin is Noel Jenkins it's going to be expensive Who's Baby premiering Sunday and Monday at 8.30 on 7 a love obsessive in a time of change a time that would see Australia divided and families and friendships destroyed over a war in a place called Vietnam. Coming soon, an epic love story passionately told against the march of great events. Sword of Honour on Seven. Hawthorne victorious by 42 points in the 1986 Grand Final as we go down now for the official presentation to our Master of Ceremonies, Ron Casey. Hello. Hello. Congratulations to the Hawthorne Football Club, winners of the 1986 Costas Premiership Cup. It's my pleasure to announce the winner of the Norm Smith Medal, Hawthorne's Gary Ayres. to the club, to the captain, Michael Tuck, to the coach, Alan Jeans. You can't have a grand final without a losing side. And also congratulations to the Carlton Club for having got this far this season and for having done their best today. Congratulations to Hawthorne and to all their players. And now would you honour the players by presenting their grand final medallions. Firstly, Number two, Chris Mew. Yes. 
Number four, Peter Russo. Number seven, Gary Ayres. Number nine, Robert Diafir Domenico. Michael Tuck 
And the victorious coach, Adam Jones, holding aloft the Premiership Cup. And they'll do a lap of honour with it now. And as they're about to do that, let's go downstairs to our man on the scene, Peter Donegan. Yes, Pete, well, the players are just leaving the race and just about to go on that lap of honour. So we'll see if we can grab especially the, uh, the Brownlow medalist, Bertie Dippy and Domenico. Very happy Russell Green walking past Russ. How does it feel? Uh, it's like to lose. Two three stars in the seconds, and I didn't think I'd get in there. Unfortunately, guys like um, Rod Lester Smith got injured, and I was fortunate enough to come in. And it was for those blokes we played for today. The guys enjoy the lap of honour, mate. And there they go now. Bertie Dippier, Domenico, just in front of us. He could hardly walk before, and just as he starts the lap of honour, Bertie, the greatest week of your life. Yeah, he's the greatest week of my life. I started training for this. Last year, the day after the losing grand final, and then I put my things for anything better. You don't look too good, but I bet you feel all right. I feel all right. You go and enjoy it too, mate. And of course, the captain, Michael Tuck. Michael, you've been waiting for this moment for how long? Uh, seven years. Well, it must be just a sensational feeling to stand in front of this crowd, especially with these guys who have done just such a marvellous oh, job all year. Yeah, great team effort today and everything like that. So that's part of it. Really, the team makes everything so much better. The individual won't win it. Well, Tucky, take the cup around and enjoy the moment. Thanks, Michael Tuck, Rodney Ede just walking along. What a magnificent job he did. Rocket, have you got the strength to get through that banner, mate? No, mate, I think I run around it. <laughs> I think I'll take the easy way for a chance. All right, well, <laughs> join your mates. Rodney Ede. A fantastic feeling out here on the ground. And these 20 players from the Hawthorne Football Club deserve this moment. 100,000 people salute 20 great champions, the 1986 premiers, the Hawthorne Football Club. Let's go back to Peter Lamb. Well, thanks very much indeed, Pete, with the Hawthorne players taking the cup and dip up over to the Hawthorne fans who will get en masse behind the goals in the bottom and also top deck of the Western Stand. And the Hawthorne players now beginning their lap of honour here at the MCG. Bertie doesn't seem to be limited anymore, Luke. That was a, a real fine effort by Bertie Deep to, to Hanigar to break that uh, barrier after being uh, limping, so, after limping so badly before that. But it's a marvellous thing for him winning the Brownlow medal of Hawthorne first. I think he would have been able to get to it with two back and legs. That's right. right. What a great effort by uh, Hawthorne, Bob. Uh, it was a real team uh, job, and uh, of course that's typical of that Hawthorne club. They never know what the well, they don't know what the meaning of defeat is, do they? Really? No, and there were some of the uh, unobtrusive type players, such as Paul Abbott, who that's right. they did superb jobs for their club. But first of all, he put Mark McClure out of business. Then he did likewise with Stephen Kernan. Chris Mew might have finished with great stats, but he made sure that any kicks that Kenny Hunter got uh, were really earned from everywhere on the ground. Dermot Brereton had the better of John Dockich. I thought probably uh, Justin Madden, uh, uh, English, uh, Robertson did quite well when he came on. And, um, you know, Alvin did a good job, uh, although early in the piece, uh, D.P. Domenico was the catalyst in a, in a great start uh, for Hawthorne. Peter Russo, and I uh, think one of the old stages of the Hawthorne side, Rodney Eads' game was superb. Uh, not to mention, of course, uh, the tactical move, and it was a great move by Al Alan Jean of uh, Ayers under the wing. OK, and network stations are uh, just about to leave us. We hope you've enjoyed our telecast today from the Melbourne Cricket Ground of the 1986 VFL Grand Final, including the final scores, Hawthorne 16-14, 110, defeating Carlton 9-14-68, the Hawks victorious by seven goals. On behalf of all the commentary team here at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, Peter Vandy, a very good afternoon to you all. For HSV viewers, you will be staying with us, of course, until 6 o'clock. Don't go away because we've got plenty more football coming up in just a few moments. Hawthorne players making their way up the race now. Peter Curran, uh, a delighted Peter Curran at the That's moment. Right. Holding the, the, what a great feeling it must cup. be for some of those younger players playing in there. And uh, Johnny Platten uh, playing in his first grand final side of, 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 since he started football, Bob. And could have easily been playing with Carlton uh, uh, this year. Yes, how would he feel at the moment? <laughs> I reckon he'd feel he's picked the winning uh, team. Well, you look at Russell Green going up the race. Now, six weeks ago, Russell Green, uh, I think he did make he the mention that, yes, Bob. Yeah. You know, he looked like he, he, he's gone for the world. Beat the Domenico with a, a nice cut over the eye. And, Won't worry him. Uh, he's uh, sore at both ends of the ground. Uh, uh, Chief Commissioner, former uh, Hawthorne committee man, uh, Ross Oakley, was uh, just uh, going up the race. and. Uh, Lou, I think it has to prove that just money is not enough. Well, that's right, and of course, uh, I think you'll agree, both of you, that uh, their imports, the uh, players they paid lots of money for, 
uh, didn't fire today, and uh, I'm quite sure the tactics of the Hawthorne coach had a lot to do with that too, because the smothering was just superb by Hawthorne. We'll take a break, and we'll be back with further comments in just a few moments from the 1986 VFL Grand Final. In today's high-tech world, tyre fitting is more than just a job. At Bob Jane T-Marts, it's a highly skilled trade. That's why Bob Jane T-Marts develop young Australians like Chris Wilde through their own training scheme. It's important to you as a customer and our success as a company to always offer the best. The best personnel, the best choice of brands at the lowest prices, and above all, the best service. And the best service is what we give you at Bob Jane T-Marts. I'm home. Ooh. Hello, Dad. Hello, Dad. Sometimes life gets so Hello, crowded Dad. with never-ending bills and expenses, Ooh. you don't have room to move. Hello, That's why there's Westpac's All Together Package. It's the financial package that brings together the services you need to better manage your family finances. If your family needs room to move, get it all together with Westpac, the bank. We've seen a whole lot of champions in Australia on NEC, Australia's champion colour TV. Seen them run through the ball, seen them hit and do it all. NEC, our champion colour TV. From the champs in colour TV comes a knockout selection of portables, like this handy little all-rounder. See the whole range of NEC's affordable portables at your retailer now, and you'll see why NEC is leading the field. NEC, our champion colour TV. 6.30 tonight following the grand final presented by Lifesavers Xanadu on 7 Monday night on Day by Day screening for breast cancer are women being exposed unnecessarily to the risk of the disease it should be compulsory that you should be able to walk in off the street and say right I want a mammogram and have it done also Monday Mondo Rock in Australia the bands really cut their teeth on live work now they're off to show the world their talent. Join us Monday at 7 on 7. 101,861 fans were at the MCG this afternoon. Still some in the grounds, but slowly making their way to the trams, trains, buses and also car park. Hawthorne 110, defeating Carlton 68. And Hawthorne only kicking one goal in the final quarter. Carlton kicking three, but they left their run a little bit too late. The goal kickers for Hawthorne. Dunstall finished up with six goals. Brereton three. Buccanara four. Singles to Russo, Ears, Curran and Eid. For Carlton, three goals to Paul Meldrum. Two goals to Steve Kernahan and singles to Evans, Rhys Jones, Glascott and McKenzie. The 1986 Victorian Football League Premiership season is proudly sponsored by Carlton. Brewers of Foster's Lager. 110 to 68. The final score in favour of the Hawks winning their sixth VFL flag. As we go down to the Hawthorne dressing room now, our reporter there on the scene is Peter Donnegan. Thank you, Pete. Well, understandably down here, there's a tremendous air about the Hawthorne rooms and uh, the players are in the rooms with Alan Jeans at the moment, but some of the personalities that are here, and I notice that we have the leader of the opposition here in Victoria, Mr. Jeff Kennett, and uh, so you're wearing a very happy face. Yes, I am. It's a, a great team effort. Night football, premiership, ground low. What else could you ask for? The best year in the club's history ever. Yes, I think so. And a real credit to not only the players, but the administrators. Cookie, the trainers, a tremendous team effort. Now tell us about Hawthorne supporters. We know what the players fell a couple of weeks ago when they were beaten by Carlton. Lots of worry, I'd imagine, over the last couple of weeks. No, I don't think so. I, I don't think we ever do well when we have a, a, a week off. I think we uh, tend to lose our edge a bit, but uh, it's proved to work very well for us this time round and uh, next year's another year we'll be back there again you'll be joining a celebration oh, tonight. I certainly will yes all right we'll let you go Jeff Thank Kennett you. the leader of the opposition here's one bloke that uh, we know his face and it's a pretty happy one at the oh. moment now listen we'll see if he's still got his singing voice <laughs> the boys are just about to come out as the club song we are in Hawthorne we are the mighty fighting horse you one. haven't lost a bit of it you look, to play. you look reasonably pleased. Come back here. Come back. Why are you so pleased? 
Well, I've been to two losing ones in the last two years. It's nice to, to get back into the winner's circle. There. It was great today. What about a... when Carlton started coming back in the second quarter? Were you worried at all? No, no, I thought the determination was there today with Hawthorne. It was a completely different kettle of fish to two weeks ago. And I think probably that loss at that time brought him back down to earth again and you realise where it's really at. And it's the finals and the grand final. You don't have second chances. And that's what happened today. Where just... are the celebrations tonight, by the way? I've got to work. I'll do you. <laughs> then I'll go and kick down to the club. You'll still be there for uh, 766? Uh, no, no, I'm midweek lotter. How long have you been with seven something? Oh. Obviously, it's all <laughs> Shirley Strawn, pretty happy. And, uh, of course, so are everyone else in the uh, Hawthorne rooms. As I said, the players at the moment are uh, locked up with uh, Coach Alan Jeans. They should be out any moment, I'm sure. Thanks, Joey. I'm sure that's uh, not going to be the last bottle of champagne that we see in here tonight. And I don't think it'll be the last time we see the Hawthorne theme song. In the meantime, I think we'll go back to Peter Landy and we'll join some of the personalities in just a moment. I saw Bob Yeomans there on the right-hand corner of the screen. And, uh, <laughs> I think Bob might have won yeah. two tonight. Oh, oh, good, good, good luck, luck 28. It's a tremendous <laughs> feeling when you win a, a flag and, and the atmosphere in the rooms is superb. But there was a little bit of sadness about this uh, grand final. Bruce still playing his last game. It would have been, you know, we're not uh, denying the fact that Hawthorne didn't deserve the grand final win. But, you know, you go out in your last game and you go out... In, in a, uh, you know, a, the way that Bruce had to go out. It's a bit sad, Bob, isn't it, well, really? Uh, Hawthorne had also lost the last two, so, um, you know, it, it's hard for side That's to just right. keep losing, and, uh, you know, oh, you'd know uh, that better than anybody. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I played well, the winning grand final down. side. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago, wasn't it? It was Not sad, but, but uh, as we've spoken again, uh, if ever a man has been, uh, like, uh, whatever you can say about a person in football, then it... it that that's what it's doing. That's, that's right. the best way I can say it, I think. All right, well, speaking of the Carlton room, let's go down there now, and our reporter on the scene is Peter McKenna. Pete? Thanks, Pete. It's a very, very quiet scene in the Carlton rooms, naturally enough, in a losing grand final side, but I'm fortunate to have uh, had a word to Steve Silvani. Steve, uh, best man in the ground the second. How disappointing uh, was it to be left out of that side? Oh, I was very disappointed, but, uh, you know, you just have to take the good with the bad, and... Uh, Hopefully, hopefully I'll be playing in a premiership team next year. Steve, you must have been very impressed with the tremendous tackling and hard work of the Hawthorne side. Yeah, they, they came, out, came out from the word go and really pressured our guys. And, uh, you know, on the day, they were the better team. Justin Madden seemed to control the uh, rucks, but you weren't getting it out of the centre. No, that's where we did fall down early on. And uh, Wallace and those kind of players really got it out of the middle. Their forwards, uh, Bacanara was a handful, and Dunstall particularly on uh, Brucey e. Dool. Yeah, uh, Bacanara, like he was left out last year from the uh, grand final team, and he really showed him today. What sort of loss will it be, uh, Bruce Dool, to the Carlton Club? You've played alongside him in defence. What sort of player was he to play with? You know, every, he's, he's so much respected around the club, you know. It's a bit. It's a sad day, you know, for the club that uh, we didn't go out on a winning note for Bruce, but uh, you know he'll be remembered for a long time at Carlton. Well, uh, congratulations to your form, the seconds. It's very, very quiet here in the Carlton rooms, Pete, and I'll throw back to you. Right, thanks very much indeed, Pete and Steve Silvani there speaking to Peter McKenna in the Carlton dressing room. Well, I understand the Hawthorne players who have come out uh, from behind their locked doors and their after-match address by coach Alan Jeans and Peter Donigan is ready for us again. Yes, thanks, Pete. Well, the boys are just out now. We might get Jason Dunstall over here if we can. Another fine performance. Just well done. No doubt you're enjoying that drink after a long, hard season. A great result tonight. Oh, it's great. Nine months of work. It's all worth it. I think there might be a bit of partying going on up in Queensland at the moment in your home state. <coughs> I think they'll be partying everywhere tonight, just quietly. Now, today uh, the start was great. There was a bit of a lull in the second quarter when Carlton looked as though they might get back into it. I think they, they threw their best at us in the second quarter. We, we held them pretty sway and then just took off in the third quarter. And no problems from there on in. Brilliant. Magnificent. The back line... You as a forward, of course, would appreciate all the efforts put in by guys like Mew. And in fact, the entire back line was superb. They didn't give their blokes a chance. They absolutely blitzed Just in one word, can you sum up the feeling? I can't. It's impossible to. It's just unbelievable. Well, you deserve to go and enjoy the celebrations. Congratulations. And let's hope that uh, we we'll see you back here in 12 months' time. Thanks very much, Craig. Jason Dunstall, the full forward, who played such a magnificent game at the MDG today.
Dermot Brereton's over there. I don't know whether we're any chance of getting him. He's normally such a quiet, shy lad, but we will try and get him over if we possibly can. Dermot! We'll get him over if he ever stops coughing. He's making a couple of gestures to me. I think he's ordering two drinks. Here he comes. Well done, old boy. Thanks, Scoop. Now, look, you're normally such a shy, reserved character. Can you put into words how you feel now? Oh, pretty good. I feel like a million dollars, you know, like the way you look. <laughs> now, what about out on the ground today? Any worries after that great start? It really looked as though you were going to run away with it in the first 15 minutes. Oh, I think Carlton got their feet on the ground after the first few minutes and uh, made a, a bit of a struggle for us, and we uh, had to work very hard to win it. Um, we edged away a bit in the third quarter again. Uh, I think Carlton took it away from us a bit in the second quarter. They played very well, but uh, the application of the fellas was excellent. What was the difference between today's side and the one that met Carlton two weeks ago? Uh, just the application, I'd say. Um, we all prepared to work until you know there was nothing left in reserve. So uh, basically, um, will to win, desire. A victory in a grand final is always sweet, but is it made even sweeter by the fact that you've lost the last two years? Oh, for sure. Like, uh, also losing the last two years, you know, I played reasonably well last year, so uh, I was hoping that, you know, we could win this year's, obviously because to uh, Eclipse last year's, but I think I was a bit young also when, we won, when I won the first one in 83, so uh, I can really appreciate this one. What about the private war you've had with Mr Doritich over the season? I think that's been blown a bit out of proportion by the, the media. John Doritich is a very good player. He, uh, you know, we've had a couple of tussles, not probably not as much many tussles as I've had with some other players. Um, just because the two grand final teams, I think they were trying to make something out of it that probably wasn't. But, uh, you know, he's a very good player and I'm, I like playing on him and I suppose he's the same because when you've played on him, you feel like you've played a real game of football. Well, can you make it five grand finals in a row next year? Oh, I'd love to, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I'll get to nice celebrations out of the way first. All right, well, uh, we've got plenty more players and fact, Gary Ayres is behind us, so I think we'll let Thank you go easy. and drink that. Thanks, Scoop. Good on you, Dermy. Gary Ayres, the Norm Smith medal winner. Gary, congratulations Thank on you. a magnificent game. But uh, I think you'd be the first to admit it was a fine team performance. Oh, tremendous. The guys have worked really hard pre-season. Everyone put in a top pre-season to get themselves fit because it was very disappointing the way we lost last year and also 84. And to the guys' credit, they just worked enormously today. The tackling was just fantastic, I thought. Now, someone said you were cheating because it looked like you bought your own football. <laughs> oh, well, I think I perhaps I just had a day out today. Now... When you came into the game, we've asked a couple of the boys, after the disappointment of a couple of weeks ago, just what did you do to bring yourself up mentally and say, OK, we can beat Well, I think we um, were a bit flat in the second semi-final because we had the week's break, and I don't think there's any substitute for a hard finals game. I don't think we were well adjusted to a finals performance, and um, we knew that we can beat them, providing we pressure and put the tackling on, and that's what the guys did today. How much... Does Alan Jeans mean to the success of this club? Uh, he's just enormous. Peter, he's such a yeah, lovable bloke. I've got great admiration and respect for the chap, and he's just fantastic. And finally, how did it feel when that Norm Smith medal was placed around your neck? Well, I didn't really believe it at first, but uh, I think I'll just enjoy it now. Certain you will. We'll let you go and do just that, Gary. Well Thanks, Peter. Thank you. Gary Ayres, the winner of the Norm Smith medal for the best player on the ground in the grand final. Well... The uh, Carlton dressing room, unfortunately, is uh, quite the opposite to in here at the moment, understandably. Carlton, very disappointed. But in the Hawthorne rooms at the moment, well, it's just a sea of smiling faces. And uh, we'll just see if there are any other players available. Peter Schwab, I can see over there, wearing the colours. He's got, in fact, the Carlton colours on. He's swapped with uh, Wayne Johnston. Again, as I said... You're going to hear this theme song a lot. Certainly down at Ferry tonight. Bertie Dippier Domenico is still walking around, shaking his head. I don't think he can believe it. And he's going to have another drink. We spoke to Bertie out on the ground. And I'm sure he's just wandering around in a daze, accepting the congratulations of everyone associated with the club. And uh, I think everyone who's ever dealt with Hawthorne has a great deal of admiration for the fact that they are such a great club. Today, they've proven it. We do commiserate with Carlton, of course. 
there can be only one winner today it's Hawthorne we'll be speaking to more of those winners very shortly but we'll take a break from Seven's live coverage of the 1986 VFL Grand Final When it comes to your insurance there's a name you need to know There's safe and sure and they care for you more than the S I've been insured with SO for years. Not long ago, I had an accident. A bad one. The car was a right. Boy, was I glad I had an SIO agreed value policy. Instead of just getting market value, which could have been a much lower figure, I got back the full sum insured from SIO with no hassles. So if you have an accident, big or small, it's great to know with SIO, you'll be well looked after. They're okay. Seems like those dreams are coming true. Looks like when it's back in style, you can feel the strength of smile. And we learn to let it show. With the fear the whole world knows. Australia's favorite. Australia's fastest. Well, the money's no problem, but why do you need new ice, Susan? Simple economics, Harry. They'll cost me less to run, take bigger payloads. Bigger payloads, eh? Yeah. The drivers love them. Hey, boss. Plus, I'll get top dollar for these old SPRs. The new medium-duty Isuzu F-Series with improved fuel economy, a roomier cab, and even more reliability. Well, Joe, you got my blessing. <laughs> I'll see you in ten years' time. The Isuzu F-Series. It comes with your accountant's blessing. Tonight, death casts a vote. The kid had so much to live for. Suicide or homicide? My son did not commit suicide, Doctor. Do you realize a volcano that might erupt if you go in there and so much as mention the word homicide? Quincy, caught in the middle, 8.30 tonight. Tonight, Christine lives in fear. Are you threatening me? Oh. Well, I wouldn't do that to a police officer. Is there something you're not telling me here? A virtual prisoner in her own home. Nobody does that to me. Cagney and Lacey, 9.30 tonight on 7. Welcome back to the jubilant scene in the Hawthorne dressing rooms after the Hawks' victory in the 1986 flag. One man who had a few worries about whether he'd be there or not during the week is John Kennedy. John, just when were you confident that you would be in the lineup? Well, I was down in the wire, Peter. I, uh, I had to go for fitness test this morning. I, was, I had one every day and uh, I uh, went down this morning and thanks to Peter Wilson, the medic, and, and, and Barry Gavin, I, they got me through. So, geez, I'm thankful to them. You know. Did you feel helpless sitting on the bench for much of the game, watching the boys out there? I must admit, I was champion of the bit to get on, and I just couldn't wait to get on, you know, because uh, the team was playing well, and I really wanted to have a go and see if I could do my best, you know. But uh, nevertheless, I got on just before three-quarter time and was you know, just thankful for that. The way things were going when you got out there, you didn't have too many worries either. No, that's right, that's right, and it's all very easy when things are going, going for you, but nevertheless, um, I was just happy to get a run. I'm sure you must be able to feel probably better than anyone for Rod Lester-Smith and what he's gone through today. Well, that's right. I mean, um, it was bad luck for Rod. He uh, had the same thing that I did, but he, I think he's, he had a medial, which is a bit more involved, and he can't afford to take a risk with something like that, whereas mine was a cartilage, and, and uh, luckily I did mine a little bit earlier and gave me a chance to play, but Rod certainly would be very disappointed, but um, the, that's football. You can't do much about that. Your father was here today watching him? Yes, he was here somewhere, so he'd be very happy, I'd say. Yes, I, I don't think there's too much doubt that his allegiance would have uh, laid with the Hawks today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, we'll let you go and celebrate on one condition. Don't drink too much champagne because you've had that many needles you might leak. <laughs> That's a fair statement, please. Good on you, mate. John Kennedy. And uh, the celebrations still continue here at uh, the Hawthorne Rooms, and we'll have more, hopefully, in just a moment. But uh, as we said before, unfortunately, in uh, grand finals, there has to be a loser, and that loser today is Carlton. Peter McKenna is in there with me. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. I have with me uh, Justin Madden. Justin, they jumped you right from the start, and you couldn't peg them back. That's for sure. Their uh, start was much better than ours. Uh, I think the five goals that they got just kept us back all day and we just couldn't recover from it really. It seemed to me that you were dominating actual hit outs at the centre bounces and round the ground but uh, 
they were able to cover your small men. They did. I think that was probably one of our problems all day, that uh, when the ball hit the ground, that we were beaten quite a bit. And, uh, in the ruck, or even from the, the flight of the ball from marking contests, I think uh, we were beaten in you know, those sort of contests all day. The week's break after you uh, beat them well out at BFL Park, did that make any difference? It may have made more difference to them than I think it did to us. Like, uh, they, they were probably more determined to, to beat us, and uh, that showed out today, whereas I think uh, it probably did us... A, you know, I would have thought that it, it did us good, but it really it mustn't have. So uh, that was just great. Right. You must have been uh, tremendously impressed with the tackling and desperation, particularly of their back men. Yes, I was. Uh, some of the tackling was uh, superb, and really, in the long run, I think that's what beat us. Well, Justin, you did the heavy work in, in the ruck, and uh, congratulations on your performance, but uh, there are many, many more years for you to come. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you. Right, we did. Back to you, uh, Pete. Righto, Pete. Well, uh, we have one of the great champions. It's Peter to Peter to Peter. Peter Knights. Pete, Pete, well done. Yeah, thank you very much. It's fantastic. The boys work really hard for it, and they deserve it. It's great. Is it better to be out there on the field and be part of a premiership side? Obviously it is, but just how does it feel for a player of recent years like yourself to have to sit on the bench and watch? <laughs> yeah, it's not uh, it's not too easy. It's, uh, there's no doubt it's pretty frustrating because when it all boils down, the guys that are out on the ground at that particular time, they're the ones that do the job. And uh, It's frustrating that when you're up there, match committee, coaching committee, whatever, you can't really do much on the day. And it is a bit frustrating, but, but it's great. We've asked the boys what the difference was between today's Hawthorne and the Hawthorne of two weeks ago. What did yeah. you think? Oh, I just thought we had such an even performance. We just had a total commitment from uh, from all the guys, you know, and I think uh, the way they approached the game today, they had jobs to do. They all done it just so well, and I think it was just a total commitment by everyone. There's one man who mightn't show up terribly well on the stats, but in my opinion, I thought he did a fantastic job, Rodney E. Yeah, so I, I thought he was pretty close to our best player, actually. I always find it hard to pick our best players, but he had a job to do today, Rocket. He not only did the job uh, incredibly well, but he also performed so well himself and that he just got so many possessions himself. But then again, impossible to individualise. Again, that's the difference between this week and a fortnight against Cart. We just had everybody playing well. You've just got to have that. What are you going to be doing next year, Pete? I don't know, Pete. I wish I knew, actually. I'm definitely going to Adelaide, moving over towards the end of this year, and uh, I hope to be involved in football over there, but... In what capacity at this stage, I'm just not too sure. But, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, I'm going to become a crow eater. All right, Pete. Well, all the best with what you Thank do. You. Congratulations on today's win. Thanks very much, Pete. All the Hawthorne champion, Peter Knights. Let's go back now to the commentary box and Peter Lamb. Right, thank you, Pete, and thank you to Peter Nice. And they're heading to South Australia. And speaking of South Australia, we hope viewers through ADS Channel 7 in Adelaide have enjoyed our telecast this afternoon. And at this stage, we say a very good afternoon to them. And there's a couple of uh, Northland supporters that have already started celebrating, it would appear. Grand final day, 1986, coming to you live on the Seven Network. We'll take a break. We'll be back here at the MCG with some highlights from Justin. There's only one way to say I love you. I long to see the laughter in your face. I can call you on the phone But when it ends we're still alone I need to say I love you face to face Come on and fly Australia Take to the sky Australia Come and fly the Milky Way When those you love I need to say I love you face to face. Have you noticed what's happening to the price of new cars? They keep going up and up and up, all except for Nissan. Nissan are holding the price of Pulsar down to $9,990. The only one with the power of a 1.6 litre engine, five speed transmission, luxurious interior and a price that's down to earth. Nissan Pulsar. Buy now, because even Pulsar must go up soon. Right, Paul? The TV in your day should be a national. Oh, no! 
World News for the team. George Denakian. Good night. And he's golden. That's the one that very often Television for tomorrow as well as today. You can get them now from National. From National. The amateur sleuths are in the thick of things. What do you think you're doing? We have not got a scrap of evidence. If you want to clear Craig's name, you have to take a few risks. Tomorrow night. I want that boy caught and convicted now. Is Wayne up to his old tricks? You take one step toward that house and your history. Sons and daughters, now at the new time, tomorrow night, 7.30 on 7. Tonight, Seven Sport is proud to present a very special edition of Seven's Big League. A complete replay of the 1986 Grand Final between Carlton and Hawthorne from 10.30 tonight on Seven. So Grand Final Day 1986 coming pretty fast to a close and at this stage of our telecast I'd like to thank our technical crew and our camera crew who have done such a tremendous job in bringing this telecast not only to the viewers in Melbourne through HSB but also to viewers right throughout Australia and indeed to 72 countries throughout the world. Uh, just quickly Bob in closing, uh, Robert Walls, did he declare his hand too quickly? I think he had no choice in, in that one Pete uh, but I think Hawthorne uh, learned probably more from the mistakes that they made uh, in that particular match. Two weeks ago. Uh, then uh, when you look at the way they lined up today, uh, everything came off. Rodney Ede onto Bradley, uh, Ede was close to the best man on the ground. Gary Ayres onto uh, David Reese jones Ayres, in my opinion, was the best player on the ground. Uh, Russo did a fantastic job. Paul Abbott back into the side now. He wasn't selected a couple of weeks ago. He uh, came back in. He started off on Mark McClure, played the second half at centre half back against Stephen Kernahan and had by far the better of both those players. Chris Mew back to full back against Hunter, made Hunter earn every touch that he had. Uh, and no matter where you looked, uh, Deep Pierre Domenico and Alvin was a great duel, but Deep Pierre Domenico uh, really set them going very early in the piece. It was a tremendous team performance, as everybody down in the Hawthorne room have said. Well, thank you, Bob, and of course, plenty of football coming up. Don't forget, next Saturday at half past four, we have the Battle of the Premiers, Hawthorne to play the West Australian Premiers, Subiaco, and you'll see that live on seven next Saturday after the tennis. Australia to play Ivan in the first of the three Gaelic football tests. That's also from Western Australia on Saturday the 11th of October. And of course the Courage Cup between Carlton and North Melbourne from the Oval in London on Sunday the 12th of October at 10.30pm. Hope, hope you can join us for that. As we say a very good afternoon, we go out on some of the highlights of Grand Final Day 1986. Hawthorne winning their sixth VFL Premiership play. bounds James Parker Triton College tries to save it and makes the shot longest shot of the NBA John Bagley Cleveland 70 footer and swish the best impromptu dance by college coach St. John's Lou Karnaseka after winning the Big East tournament the hockey fight of the month Rick Tockett of the Flyers in the white George McPhee of the Rangers in the blue the worst skiing attempt of the month Wolf Fenderson of East Germany World Ski Championships in Cone Austria Fenderson suffered only a broken collarbone. Warner Wolf for the uh, plays of uh, Tonight, come to a place where dreams come true. This is Xanadu, the most dazzling romantic musical fantasy in years. It's a love story about a boy and a girl from two different worlds. 
It's spectacular entertainment that will transport you beyond your wildest dreams. Starring Olivia Newton-John, Michael Beck and Gene Kelly. At the special family time, 6.30 tonight, following the grand final, presented by Lifesavers, Xanadu on 7. Tonight, Seven Sport is proud to present a very special edition of Seven's Big League, a complete replay of the 1986 grand final between Carlton and Hawthorne from 10.30 tonight on Seven. Thursday night, a turbocharged edition of Beyond 2000 looks at our favourite toy. From high-speed exotic cars to the latest off-road vehicles, we've compiled a selection of the most innovative and startling creations from the auto industry. Combine power and speed with style in a turbocharged Bentley the fuel-efficient face of the super truck of the future and the magnificent lines of the Vector Twin Turbo. So, fasten your seatbelts as we take it to the streets. Beyond 2000, presented by AMP, 8.30 Thursday. Kyneton, Victoria, 1945. Two baby girls born at the same time. They've given you the wrong baby. So began the most notorious, emotionally explosive custody battle in Australia's history. She does have blue eyes. Yours are brown. I think we've got the wrong babies. A bizarre chain of events that shocked the world as it shattered the lives of the two families involved. There has been a mix-up, mate. Nola is ours. Angela Punch McGregor is Gwen Morrison. We'll get justice, Mr. Calpoli. Drew Forsythe is Bill Morrison. You could not possibly be the father, Mr. Morrison. Vicky Luke is Jess Jenkins. I know I have my own baby. Peter Curtin is Noel Jenkins. It's going to be expensive. Who's Baby? Premiering Sunday and Monday at 8.30 on 7. Channel 7 congratulates Alan Jeans and the Hawthorne Hawks, winners of the 1986 VFL Premiership. A jubilant Hawthorne wins its sixth flag, beating Carlton by 42 points after leading all day. Good evening. In other news tonight, the brutal slaying of a Maryborough policeman. Two promising footballers badly burnt in a house fire in Fitzroy and the state opposition on the attack over an embarrassing break-in at Parliament House. Police have arrested several youths following the callous shooting of a policeman early this morning in the central Victorian town of Maryborough. The policeman was gunned down after stopping to check on several youths believed to have been trying to start a stolen car. 34-year-old Senior Constable Morris Moore was found hanging out of his divisional van shortly after he'd stopped to check on a possible stolen car. He'd gone to get milk for the police station when he's believed to have seen several youths pushing the car. Minutes later...